We are here at Salem Park and we want to tell you there's been lots of activities. Don't worry about what you missed. It's what you have not seen. It's what you could have seen. But worry about the fact that we have cricket and the MNI too. Winning the toss and batting first. We've just witnessed a job catcher of Dino Baker. I'll give you an update as to what has transpired while you're away in our power issues here. I want to apologize again. Here's Dino Baker up to get the ball to Moraine or Yearwood. And he's beaten again outside the off stump. The delivery before he was beaten, he edged it and was dropped by Joshua Grant. And we've spoken about how good Joshua has been. But it looks like he gets so excited when the ball touches the edge that he's catching it before he hits his glove. Anyway, so nevertheless, that's the game of cricket. Dino Baker is bowling well. Comes up balls to Yearwood. Yearwood is coming stylishly forward this time and playing it up on the offside. We're in the course of over number 17. 90 for 3, MNI 2, and we're playing 40 over cricket. As I say, there's, um, we're, we have Trevor Perkins. I can't peep out while I'm doing commentary, so I'll have the people after the over Trevor. You see the amount of distractions you get when you're on the commentary. I know. Here's another swinging. Yearwood has, Yearwood has something in his pocket. I am betting anybody that this guy have to have something in his pocket. He was a wild swing to hit it to the heavens of Garibaldi Hill. He missed everything. The ball missed everything. The keeper missed everything. He went for four buys. 94 for three. And he would again. He's on his about 50. He's at nine lives. This guy is a cat out here today. Nine lives. He's on 36. And he's faced 49 balls. And in those 49 balls, there were about seven chances. Trevor, good afternoon. Uh, I, I think Year would need to capitalize on these drop catches and stuff like that. Put his head down. I think he sh should have a good day today. Not no, should. He's having a good day. And I think he's going to make a hundred today. I, I, there's no way that he can get out. He, this guy is doing everything to get out, and he's not getting out. So I don't think he can get out. I don't know what he has done or what he tried to do today when he got here. But anyways, he's, he's on a... My wallet keeps falling out of my pocket, and I'm convinced that somebody's going to go with it at some point. So I'll put it in my front pocket, um, Trevor, because you never know. Um, don't take nothing for granted. There's not much in it, but I, nevertheless, there's my cards. Not the money. Sometimes that's more important than that. Yeah, Baker up to the wicket. Ball to Maureen. Maureen is coming onto the front foot. Not really coping well with um, Dino Baker, but that brings up the end of over number 17. Dino Baker. 24 for 3 of 17 overs with 23 overs remaining in the day's play. I'm not sure if we're going to lose some overs based on a few little minor things, but we'll see. We have a long day and we probably get 40 overs in. Trevor, uh, good afternoon. Tell the people about you a little. Well, right. well, I want to let the listeners know that because you're into sports, you should be able to talk about sports. So you're not in the commentary spot, spot where you're doing your first thing in comments. Yes. And it's always a good for the first. But that one, the white, has looked good. And we're going to continue the discussion. Here we see up to the wicket, the ball to Fry. Fry is getting a ball wide down the onside. I don't know why he was trying that. I don't know why he, he thought that uh, Fry was playing out of his crease. But Fry handled it well and it went through to the keeper. Didn't take clearly, but stopped effectively. And there is no damage done. 95 for three. Well, damage done to a white. 95 for three. Over number 18 comes up now. White. White is, is slipped away. Bad ball, and it's given the treatment. He could go to the boundary. No, picked up on the boundary by Stevel. And oh, well, 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 well. I don't know. Young Yearwood was looking for two, and all that said, all of that lovely shot, and Fry only run one. I don't know if he's gonna pass his BP test there now, Trevor. I don't want to catch you off guard, you know. But I'm just saying, that one looked like it should have been three well, runs. Well, with the way that um, everything is going, I think we have to start to be the test at this level. <laughs> yes. So. Well, of course, and it's, it's the intention, really. Um, the, the, the stomach worms are getting a bit queasy down here. Might have to get some food. But here is um, Zawandi White. Up to the wicket to bowl to Yearwood. Yearwood is hitting it. One bounce down to uh, uh, young Jamari Lane. And Yearwood as I say, has lived such a charm life that he thinks he can do anything out there. He's Superman. Superman out there, Yearwood. 
uh, 97 for three, and he score moves. Uh, he score moves individual target uh, 37. Here is a one one up to wicket to bowl to fry. Fry is dropped on the ball. Low shot is out. Outlet before that was plump. And really and truly, someone the white is really mixing it up here. He's in, he's got his third wicket, but I'll tell you what he's doing. He's, he's bowling the slower deliveries, and he's, he, he's the surprise delivery, the quicker one. And you've seen that Fast. being effective. Faster Absolutely. So we've lost uh, another wicket here. No, 97 for four. The captain is doing it all. He's into his fourth over. So they would have to contend with him for four more overs after this. So really and truly, uh, there, there has to be a discussion between young Yearwood and now Live and Aiden Live and who's coming in at number six, seven, number seven, 97 for four. So after uh, I'll give you the fall of wickets here now, I should have them somewhere on the screen. Yes, the wickets fell at where, where are you seeing it? I don't think I have the fall of wickets in front of me, but I'll tell you about it in a bit. Yeah, yeah here we go. F wickets fell at. Scores, I just want to see the scores. 19, 73, 90, and 97. So within a space of 24 runs, they've lost three wickets after a good stand between McPherson Mead and, and was it Ke Yearwood? That took the score from 19 to 73. We've had a, a spate of wickets so far as our technical team continues to work here. And our technical team, Mr. Adrian Edgecombe, uh, and of course, Kai. Kai is on the cameras, and you know we'll we'll get our cameras to focus on our our, our technical guys a bit. Ninety-seven for four. It's flipping in and flipping out, and we'll get it. Here is a delivery up to Aiden. Aiden is driving up on the offside. So uh, Zawani White has pulled back uh, as the captain. He's pulled back. Maybe the decision to feed. In the M and I twos batting. Here is the one the white up to the wicket to bowl to Liburn and that one is flashing at it outside the off stump. Hands go up in the air, uh, but nothing, 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 because nothing was taken clearly. So that uh, leaves the score on 97 for four. I don't think there's a run, one run off this over so far. Three runs off the over. Right. Right, three runs off the over, one wide, one and uh, two ones and a wicket. Christian Yearwood is on 37. He's been there for some time. I think he went out to bat first. Yes, Yearwood, he, went, he was batting. He's the first man in with Cajun Sullivan. Sullivan made 11 runs of 15 deliveries. Mark first made 26 of nine. Swarrell Smith, seven of eight, and Taylor Fry, one of two. Uh, here is our new white. Up to the wicket. To bowl to Livan. Livan is getting a full pitch. Livan is out caught. Caught and bowls. Our new white. The captain, Captain Supreme. And really has done the trick with his bowling. Left arm orthodox. Has picked up four wickets for 22 runs of four overs. And really has changed the game dramatically. Yeah, Joshua, and Joshua. Dropping, simple dropping, catches, dropping yes. Simple ball to him, so. Well, I can tell you that um, the, the, the MNI one uh, would have lost the toss. Uh, MNI two won it and decided to bat. They did lose a quick wicket at 19 with Cajun Sullivan. But then there was a partnership between Mark First Mead and Young Yearwood. And Yearwood, who's living the, the dream life as a batsman. Really and truly can not be out if he even tries. And all the other batsmen are not even getting another chance. But here is he facing up to Dino Baker, who has had some chances of him dropped. Comes up to bowl to here with is getting a good delivery. Dino Baker using all of his experience and confidence as well. You can see Dino Baker looking really confident. He's put on some weight since I last seen him. Don't know if he's just the lockdown story, but he did say to me he can pass a BP test. I will still leave that to the physio and the trainer. We have a mic swipe, 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 
water is heated that high, handsome, hard, long. One bounce into the fence, four. And as I said, this guy can't do nothing wrong. Brings up the 100 for the MNI 2 team. Because if the fielder was in his rightful position, he would have been coming from the boundary line in. Yes. From the boundary line in. And that ball falls over his head and didn't go for six. It but went for I four. I tell you, that comes from the cockiness and confidence of the bowler who didn't think it oh. necessary. Here is he. Ball is already slapping it back for the point into the... Oh, well, they're coming back for two. They're going to get two as well. He moves into the 40. He's on 43 now. 43. Let's go 101 for five. 103 for five. And 101 came up off in... Some minutes, we've got it. 211, 111, 121 balls, 88 minutes, and 10 fours, 1 six. Here is a delivery, played up in the offside. And uh, Dino Baker, who's uh, in his fifth over, 19 runs off him so far, 4.4 overs, 19 runs, no wicket. Uh, here one is at 43, and as I said, this guy should get 100. Here is he coming up to bowl. Baker. Baker is getting uh, not Baker, but Yearwood getting a good delivery. That was the arm ball. Came back in a bit. And Yearwood did not know much about that one. Was beating all his up. But again, he can't do nothing wrong. He won't get up. He will not be out. He can he could try to be out all he wants. He won't be. Here is uh, Baker. Up to the wicket to bowl to Yearwood. Yearwood is getting another delivery. And he's back oh, on the back foot. Is oh, he bowled? No. He's bowled. Clean ball, oh. finally. Well, the commentator's curse caught him on that occasion. That one was flatter, faster, and he came back on the back foot instead of the front foot. And a knock that was full of life and full of a lot of different things has come to an end. And he's made 43, nevertheless. Really, really, his mother is clapping away. And I think debut at Pollard, Trevor Pollard, making his debut. Debut? Debut in uh, uh, senior cricket here on Monster. Uh, he's going up, Trevor Pollard. Yeah, batting at number nine, is it? Oh, number eight. Trevor Pollard. So where's Damien Williams? I think Damien Williams is the senior man. He should be padded up and be going in. I don't know what's going on here. But we'll look to see what is happening with Damien Williams. But 103 for six. Uh, Naim, Naim, Naim Young. Is it Naim Young? I've got to get his name. Nehemiah Young. Yeah, Nehemiah Young. Nehemiah Young. Neymar Young is out. Is in the on strike? Right, well, I, you know, all some technical glitches and technical yeah, things going on in the background. Yeah? That, that would be I doubt eventually. Yes. Okay. I know. You're, you're in the safe hands of uh, Mr. Edge coming here. Yeah? Live violence. So. It started, it started really, Trevor, with the fact that we don't have any power. Oh. And once you don't have any power, a lot of things can go wrong. But nevertheless, we have a generator, thanks to House Rock. Here's a foolish delivery by his own white, flicked up in the offside. There could be something going on here, Trevor. Pollard. Oh, well, all sort of mix up. But this young man, um, Lane, is not to be played with. And Naim Young, Naimaya Young, really uh, had to scramble back. And also Pollard, he looked like he's, he's trained something. I don't know. Oh, it's our first match. And these guys, some of them might not have taken into training past couple of weeks as good as it could have been. Here is a Wonder White who's in his fifth over. I'll tell you something about him and he's, he's out, he's out, oh my goodness. Wow, wow, some acrobatic stuff going on out there. He was playing in the air, so Wonder White was diving to his left and then it was uh, Jam Jamal Williams who was trying to catch a rebound. I, I must say, the feelers are looking agile, crisp, you know, few chances went down but they're, they're giving it their, their all. Sawa Dewey, 4.2 overs, 22 runs, 4 wickets, and really and truly has broken the back of the MNI 2 batting uh, lineup and has really ripped through the, the middle order uh, uh, and gotten the MNI 1 back into this game because the, 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 we are at over number, I'll tell you in a bit, I'll tell you, and this is kind of foolish to We really bowled full, but these guys not capitalizing on this full toss. That could have even been close to a no ball. We're into over 20. We're into over number 20 or 40. And I can tell you, 103, that's about five runs and over, almost. 5.28 runs and over. So they're going at a good clip. A good clip nevertheless, a good clip. Yes. lost a lot of wickets. Six wickets down. Here is the one who I, Maya, Maya Young, 
plays it up on the offside and there is no run. 4.4 overs bowled, 22 runs. And four wickets for someone the White. Really, uh, I don't know. He's really bowled some indifferent balls and gotten some wickets as well. Yes. Here is White. Up to the wicket to bowl to Young. Young is going back and slapping at a delivery outside the off stump. Could have been a wide. Close enough. But yes. nevertheless, it doesn't go for White. That ball goes into the score box. 4.5. Thanks to scores. Uh, Cordella, Vanessa, and company. I won't call any more names. I would say, and company. Here is White. Up to Young. Young just comes on to the front foot and plays it up on the offside. I don't know if you have, have a cry now to try and bat out uh, Zawandi so White. Andy, oh, well. But Zawandi has ripped through the batting uh, here, Trevor. That faster ball is catching everybody off guard. Yeah. The last one that he pitched drifted outside off stuff, but if he was on wicket, yeah. you yeah. could see he wasn't, the batsman wasn't prepared for that. And Trevor, I want you to comment on the Garibaldi Hills, the, the, the picturesque oh. view that we have here at uh, Salem Park from a commentary position you, you, with the Super Hills in the background. You, you, you're making me want to pull a red spirit. I don't know if I would be able to qualify, but wonderful conditions, Greg. Garibaldi Hill, the beautiful houses on Isles Bay Hill. Beautiful view of St. George's Hill, a little cloud yes. above the Last volcano, <laughs> but um, a wonderful day for cricket, Gregory, a wonderful day. D Clear day. skies, a little patchy cloud above the mountains, but lovely day. Here's Trevor Pollard getting his first delivery and stroking it into the offside. Well played. I, I, I think he looks good. He's a left-hander too, and he's stroking that one from Dino Baker. It was in the sixth over, 19 runs before this for one wicket and a maiden. Comes up now to bowl to Pollard. Pollard is on the front foot again. Pushing it up in the offside. And the players are having a laugh. They but are having a laugh because they've never really seen Pollard. But I must, I must say, Greg, he's looking confident. Well, he's playing really well. He's playing yes. into the middle of the back. Playing yes. straight. <laughs> yes. 103 for six. We are in the course of over number 21. <laughs> uh, here is... To bowl to Pollard. A little bit of a little comradery between both players as well. They've been friends for a while. Here is the up to the pole. Pollard. Pollard is stroking it up on the outside for no run. So Dino Baker is not really getting the penetration that he would want. He probably might not have known that young uh, Pollard could be so effective in the bat. But let's yep. see. Pollard. Short. Dimitri. 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 What's the word I'm looking for? Diminutive. Diminutive. Uh, oh. Figure. Struggling or not, that middling, one. middling everyone, everything, Gregory. Middling, middling everything. As it worked out for him with Poland, he's played four deliveries from him and has coped with them well. Here is he up to the wicket to bowl to Poland. Poland is choking it, and maybe he will be tempted to bring a player a little closer. That one was a little eerie, pushing away from his body, but 103 for six. Dino Baker in the course of number six. All sort of things going on with my monitor screen. My technician is doing all sort of work. Yeah, he's a good, a fast, fast delivery. And I want, yes, that monitor is the one I want. And yeah, this one over here, my friend. Mr. Technician, this one is going in and out. I don't want it to go in and out. Right, 103 for six. Uh, and definitely we're working our way through. We're working with all the difficulties and challenges we have, Trevor. And we're at the old end of over no 21. In a 40 over reduced by 10 because of the electrical issues that we've had. And as you can see, the folks now can see the picturesque view that we have, the most majestic view of a cricket pitch uh, can be compared to any in the world. I've seen South Africa, I've seen New Zealand, but Montreal has just uh, matching conditions here in terms of outfield, beauty in the background, and cricket here at Taylor Park. MNI 1 versus MNI 2. MNI 2 batting. 103 for 6. Here is Awandi White in over number 6. And he's up to the bat. Launch out. Umpire is out. Leg before. 5 wicket haul for Zawandi White. He continues to dominate with the ball. He continues to take wickets. He continues to show why he's a class above the rest. Because he is one player. All sort of glitches going on still. I'm worried about my technique. Trying a bit too much, too much. I think we need to work with what's working for now. I mean, my technician is just trying to be a little bit ambitious. But nevertheless, 103 for 7 
Zawande White has five wickets of 5.1. 5.1 overs. Yeah, I've lost some some of our screen here. Yes, we're back up. Just want to make sure that my technician knows that we have to just go with what we got for a bit. And then when we get to the technical players here. That's their cut. We got. Still working through our technical glitches, sorry, and we apologize for any um, little glitch that you may be experiencing in our commentary or even in our broadcast. And we're working through, we're working through here. Uh, it's, 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 it's probably one of the first uh, islands back to Which laptop? Okay, we're switching cameras now. So we're doing all sorts of things. Now, again, we tell you, we apologize. So what, we're giving you something. And at least once we're bringing you something, we are a It's all good. And it's the first day. People. It's the first day, and you know the glitches will be ironed out eventually. So Wandy White, who continues, he's into over number six, six point two, twenty-two runs, five wickets, and the one man really has done the damage for his team as captain, and has ringed around his bowlers' changes, but he's brought himself and Dino Baker on, and they're pretty much going to bowl out their overs. He's uh, in over number six. And he's going to look to bowl out the, the MNI 2 for less than 120. Let's see. Comes up now to bowl to the new batsman who is, uh, I'll tell you who the new batsman in a bit, Rashawn Fenton. And he strokes it up in the offside and there is no run. He's going to try to bat out the, the, the spin of uh, Zawande and Dino, but it will be well advised to still look to push the scoring along. Uh, really into the tail now. Damien Williams is still yet to come. I don't know what's going on. Two Williams to come. Here is a delivery outside off stump, left alone by Rashawn uh, Fenton. And uh, definitely, we love the fact that we can have cricket in Montserrat. And among all of the things that have been going on with this pandemic, we are still able to bring live cricket, a cricket tournament actually, not just a cricket match, but a cricket tournament. And um, uh, we are on TV. Ah, the delivery that pitches and spins. Uh, Trevor, that one was a, that one was giving some bite. Great bounce, great bounce. Yes, bounce and turn. Always a good asset for uh, uh, a spin, spin bowler. Bounce and turn. Zawandi White with five wickets in his bat. 5.5 overs ball so far. One main, 22 runs. Comes up. The ball defended, defended, strokes it out into the offside. Watching and playing carefully. And that brings us to the end of over number 22. 22 overs done. 103 for seven. We're playing the MNI, two, MNI the Monster Cricket Association 50 over tournament. From Park. One question for you, Gregory. Is Zawandi White in the Leeward Island Center? Well, he's on the radar. Let me, let me use that term. I would love to have said yes because it's logic. Logic analysis says to me that when a guy plays for the West Indies on the 15 and is in the West Indies on the 19 setup, he should be an automatic pick. But there are times when you, you query certain things, but I'm now in a position to not just query it but to actually action some elements of what should really be the policy. So, Zawani White is on the radar. He's in the eyes. Uh, he has had some poor um, outings in terms of liberal on the 19 and so forth. But nevertheless, he is uh, in the setup, and he should be making his way in. He just needs to work hard on his cricket. He's doing some good work on his fitness. He has a delivery outside Pollard's stump from Dino Baker's seventh over. First delivery and beating him, and there is no run. But definitely a good question. A good question, and definitely you could see that he has a future in terms of what's happening with uh, Leeward's and West Indies. Here's a delivery from Pollard, played upon the onside, and there is no run. Because I know he's been basically in my scope since you guys had that on the 15, on the 17 tournament a few years ago.
fast. Same fast. delivery that he bowled to Yearwood. Absolutely. So he, he, both bowlers have been dominant in terms of getting that surprise speed and, and, and quicker delivery. And here comes David Williams. I'm very surprised that the, uh, that the number of David Williams is coming out at number 10. I'm telling you. Yeah, that's very, that's very concerning. I don't know if he's nursing somewhat of an injury, but he is a better player than that in terms of the experience of this batting lineup. And I think he should have been out somewhere number eight or, 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 or even number seven. But nevertheless, this is what they've chosen. And he's coming out now at number 10 with the score 103 for eight. For uh, the score uh, of one sir, vice captain. And uh, uh, really, truly, I won't see their play in the squad. But we'll see, he's one that is looking to go off to better uh, improve his skills in the UK. Uh, so the score line reads, uh, MNI 2 wins the toss and battle. Christian Hayward, ball maker for 43. Of 58 balls, 5 balls and 1 6. Casual Sullivan, Carl Tamari Lane, very good catch in the end of Travis Harrison, 11. Here's a delivery to the middle kick to, to David Willow. Show up up on the, uh, um, to the ball up on the offside. And he, he has a little shiny, but never did, did actually release the ball. And attempt uh, shiny. Yeah, he's late. I'll put the ball to Willow. Willow is coming. And the front foot on that. He wasn't sure what to do, whether to play or, or, or not play. And he had to come to a hurry in the end. Brings up the end of over the seven from Lino Baker. Uh, that end of seven over one hundred and three. We're really glad you're coming. As Paul calls down to the top, we're not going to be difficult. We just have to watch it on YouTube and, and enjoy the conditions. Yeah, well, uh, we're getting some comments. Uh, maybe Buzz Arms outside the feed is going through and not necessarily our. Inside team, so that's a very good one. Probably a good one. You can say so. I don't know. 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 I do has done the damage for his team as captain. Comes up, bowls to uh, uh, Fenton, who tries an aggressive drive, but could only get it up to uh, get it up to uh, mid on, and there is no run. Zawande White up to the wicket to bowl to to Zawande. Um, Trevor, we are we're wondering. Mic check, mic check. We're we all right. We have also well, um, the, the, controllers in here. The, the way White is going at this point, there's no reason for him to come off the bowling today. Well, he has he has two more one over one point three overs after this, I think. One point two overs after this, and really and truly, he would look to finish up and wrap up the innings. Okay, my brother, I'm here. I'm here. We're getting some feedback, so maybe the microphone on that unit. The microphone is too loud. Okay, well, Cordell, I'm just saying that the inside mic is too loud. He can listen outside. I'm hearing feedback in my ear. White, White is making the best of his bowling today. Taking advantage. He's showing his, his class. And here's a delivery us. that is gone through and they could run through for a bye. So they get a score. And Trevor, we need yes. a mic check. Uh, that same flatter, faster delivery that I talked about from Zawandi White. And the clear thing that we're seeing, Grant is not, for some reason today, is not keeping that cleanly. Went through for extras. Well, he was looking good before those drop catches, so maybe his confidence fell. So now the score line is 104 for 8 of 23. 24 overs and... 24 overs and the score right. So the score for, let's see, the both batsmen are not. Damien Williams are not. Fenton are not. 1-1 one, one came off of that. 7 overs, 19 runs, 2 wickets for Dino Baker. 7 runs, 22, 7 overs, 22 runs, 5 wickets for Zawandi White. And we're going to get it all right. We have some, a few little glitches here and there, but we're going to get it all right. 
Baker comes in, bowls to Fenton. Fenton stays it down to a uh, short fine leg. Sure, third man and should have gotten a single. But nobody is looking for any runs. Damien, Damien is trying to let... I think Damien's strategy is to let uh, Dino and Zawandi bowl out and then try to see if he can get some runs off the pace. But he got some more spin coming at him. We only... <laughs> He got to make runs away and he gets it. Here's up. And that one is swinging and he's out. And he's out. So that's the chance that you take when you don't take a single. And that, the ball before, Sean had a single and should have gotten a single and got off the map. Damien Williams did not move. And Dino Baker has picked up his third wicket. So the spin combination of Zawandi White and Dino Baker has ripped through the heart, the stomach, the belly, everything of the MNI2 batting. And has now seeing the, the introduction of number 11. So 10 and 11 out there, and surely it looks like the curtains are coming down on the innings and it, and of it's, it's clear, you can see the level of the two spinners are senior players, basically, who has had that experience, and they are dominating. Yeah, well, Trevor, you pay the price if you don't play the right cricket. And somewhere along the lines here, uh, the MNI2 batting lost, lost this way. And I think when Mark First Mead was caught on the deep mid wicket boundary to a superb catch of Tevik Benjamin, uh, that really caused a little bit of a, uh, a disturbance. Then the skipper came out, and I think Fry should have come out at a point. Fry came out after the skipper, who got a quick seven. But then it all went downhill. Here's a delivery flicked into the onside, not out, says umpire uh, Lane. Uh, there was a shout for leg before. 7.3 overs bowled by Dino Baker. He has 19 runs, 3 maidens, and 3 wickets. Uh, Zawani White, 7 overs, 3 maidens, 22 runs, 5 wickets. So 8 wickets between these two, two uh, bowlers. And the other wicket went to Travis Harrison. Here is Dino. He's hit high, hard, handsome. He's going to go one bounce into the fence. And I'm telling you, this is what a number 11 batsman should do. Take Don't be pushing and prodding nothing. Take on the spinners. Take swing, on the spinners. Swing to the skies and yes. hope. But that was a lovely shot. It was well executed and hit away by Leon Williams and put some respectability to his scoring. He gets two balls and he has four runs. That's another Williams. Yes, another Williams. 108 for nine. Uh, will this be a challenge in total? Will the bowling attack of the MNI uh, two be able to to defend this total? Still left to be seen as it's a pretty young batting lineup, but you have Zawandi White, Jamel KB, uh, Stevel Rodney, uh, Joshua. Here is a delivery outside the off stump, and there is no run. 108 for 9. We're in the course over number 25, and Dino Baker is in his final over. 7.5 overs, 3 maidens, 23 runs, 3 wickets. Here is Baker, away from the far end, to come into bowl to uh, Leon Williams, who is flicking out delivery, at a delivery, a wide delivery, signal now by umpire lane. It was a faster one as well, trying to catch the batsman off guard. It was effective on that occasion. And there is one more, 109 for nine. After being 90 for three, I will tell you a little more. 90 for two, actually. And I will tell you a little more about that. The, wicked, the fall of wickets, I will get that for you in a bit. But definitely at 90 for, for two, you would have thought that the, the scoreline would have been 200. But nevertheless, Zawandi White had other ideas. It was 90 for two. I'll tell you, uh, 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 here is Astier. <laughs> and he's gotten it through. He might get two if he run hard, but he gets one. He's coming back. Oh, there's trouble. Wow. Oh, he did it. Oh, my goodness. Well, there's all sort of trouble. All sort of trouble. He was running, and then he turned to come back. The ball was shy, hit the stump, and then something ricocheted and hit him. I don't know what it was. Hope there's not too much damage. Damien Williams has been struck somewhere in the face. It's some water coming out. I don't see an ice pack. We should get some ice. I think. It, oh, he, I don't think there's too much damage done, but I just unsettled by that blow, Trevor. Yes, but I, I think eventually, Gregory, the sharpness would come. Precision would come with more games because they've been, you know, the COVID has set everything back. Right. So having cricket actually 
and having it on a more regular basis would sharpen their skills and things would eventually get better. <laughs> trying to get some help and a break, but yeah, trying to get some help and a break, but you know, all sort of excuses. That's all right. We've got Zawani White in his final over. Dino Baker has completed a spell of eight overs, three maidens, 25 runs, three wickets. Really, really impressive bowling spell by Dino Baker, and he's expected from him, really. He's our senior bowler in the Monsat National setup and really should be doing that type of work. Here's the one, the White, another player who is in the middle of oh, a, a fantastic spell of spin bowling, has picked up some five wickets for 22 runs of seven overs and one ball with three maidens. Zawandi White has broken the back. Christian Yearwood, uh, no, it was Sullivan, fell when the score was 19. Here is the up three wicket to bowl to Williams, wide outside the off stump, no run. Uh, 19 for one was the score. Mark First Mead was caught brilliantly on the mid wicket boundary uh, of uh, Zawandi White for, seven, uh, uh, for 27 when the score was 73. Here is Zawani White missing his run. Dead ball signal. Uh, Warren Smith was the third batsman to go. He fell when the score was 90. It was 90 for three. He was, uh, I'll tell you in a bit. Get that for you. Warren Smith was, was he bold? Yes, he was bold by Zawani White for seven. Here is uh, White. Up to Williams. Williams is swinging. And that is what I would expect from a number 11. Jamal Williams. Leon Williams or Leon Williams or Damien Williams. Oh right, so right, all right. So I'm being coach in the commentary spot here by my good friend again. Here is a ball outside the off stump. He's into his last over, his final over, seven point four. He's Leon Williams facing up to uh, to someone the white. So as I said, Warren Smith fell when the score was ninety. He made seven. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, it looks like I'm coming back to that. I have to look at what's going on here. Here is he swinging again, missing, and uh, there is no run. So, yes, yeah, so Wild Smith made seven. Theodore Fry fell when the score was 97. 97 for four, and he made one. Aiden Liven fell at the same score, 97 for five. I'll get back to that. As we see Zawandi White with his final delivery in his spell, where he can finished innings here. It's left to be seen. Comes in. Bowls to Leon Williams. Williams is swinging. Lovely shot. Down to the boundary for four runs. That one was down the onside and Leon Williams is swinging. And swinging he should. 114 for nine. Can there be a cameo of a partnership here between Leon Williams and Damien Williams? And both of them are in the middle talking. Yes. It's never over. Never over, Gregory. And ever since Williams came in, he's been taking the attack to the spinners. Well, I give you a joke. I'm going to give you a joke. There's going to be another Williams. And this time it's on the bowling team. So, Monshot uh, Cricket and the, the MNI setup has seen three Williams so far. And this one now is Jamal Williams, who will be taking up the attack from the far end, left arm. Orthodox as well, and I'm good to see. I'm glad, happy to see uh, uh, two left arm spinners in this uh, uh, cricket tournament because, really and truly, I think they are they are the better in terms of look, in terms of spinners because they, they, they're so natural. The, the off spinner looks like it's a made up art, but the left spin orthodox seems to be so natural to be the the, the, the orthodox spinner. Anyways, talk a little more about that at some point. But it's going to be Damien Williams, who has come out at number 10. He's batting with his namesake, or his title namesake, Williams, Leon. And both of them so far has put on partnership is about, what? It's about 11, 10, 10 the partnership. So definitely they would look to push it maybe to about 40. If they get another 40 or 34, 36 runs, 150 might be challenging. Let's see. Williams might have another idea. Here's a, a wide delivery. He let his shoulders, arms, and it's signal wide. 115 for nine. Can they bat out the remaining uh, 14 overs left? 14 overs left. Let's see. Jamal Williams uh, is missing his run. Dead ball signal as the bail at the striker's end falls. Has been doing that for a bit. Uh, yeah, plastic. Yeah, so it's a bit... Uh, 
light in the wind. And we have a bit of a wind, a stiff crosswind here at Salem Park. Jamal Williams comes up, bowls to Williams. Williams is going back and beaten. Played a shot to cut back with a point. Missed it. And it is Williams who goes back to his mark quickly. Comes in to bowl to Williams. Damien Williams hit. Hit and hit well. That is hit. And that will stay hit. He should have run back and looked to where that gone. And maybe he sees all everyone on deck. Six signal. We're going to have a minor delay. Because that was really hit. So 121. And that's what I said, uh, Trevor. Uh. Damien Williams coming out at number 10 was a bit of a surprise. I'm not sure what could have been the, the, the plan or the strategy. So 121 for nine. But the Williams and Williams combination is looking good. We've had three boundaries so far between the Damien Williams and Leon Williams. And like you said, who knows? We could be in for a cameo. A 41 partnership would do. Well, do wonders, do wonders to the um, to the MNI too, because they won the task. And I'm not sure if 121 for nine is what they envisioned when they decided to bat. But good bowling from both the main spinners for the oh, yeah. MNI one team, the one the white uh, captain and Dino Baker, the most experienced spinner in, in the lineup. For for sure, ever since Kristen fell, there's been like a landslide. There's no. You're right. I'll read. I'll read from 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 Warren Smith. Seven, Fry one, Live on zero, Young zero, Pollard zero, Fenton zero. So it looks like a, um, it's like a dollar sign money. You know, it's like ten thousand dollars coming down the line. It just reads like that. Uh, my technician is out somewhere. I would have get him to screenshot what we have on the score on the score sheet right now, just to show how it looks. It really looks awkward, awkward on the paper. And it really shows the, the dominance of the spin bowling the spin of Dino Baker and so on the way. Well, the ball has been retrieved. And we're, we're, number three is on Damien Williams' back. He's had some, a little bit of drama out there as well. And uh, he, here goes um, Jamal Williams. So this, I think, what uh, Captain Zawandi was, was fearful of. But I don't think he, 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 he might have been well advised to bowl uh, young Williams here. But let's see. Williams comes into ball to Williams. Williams goes back and he's chopping it and almost chopping it on. It was a wider and he's coming over the wicket now who does um, Jamal and almost picked up a wicket there. Now I'm looking at that. When Kristen was in, if the captain should have continued with the left-right combination. Well, absolutely. Here is uh, Williams. Williams and Williams is Williams is Williams. All sorts of Williams going on out there. Jamal Williams bowling to Damiel Williams. Williams swung and missed everything. He went for the kitchen sink on that one. He was throwing everything at it. I think that Lasso Freer was going to pick that one up, Trevor. <laughs> it's Jamal Williams. The ball to Damien Williams who's swinging through the line. He's going to get a single. He's just swinging at everything. Really swinging at everything. And probably seeing food from um, Jamal Williams bowling. He's bowled, what, five deliveries so far? And eight runs so far. Well, that's the over. Well, six deliveries, but it's only five legitimate deliveries. 122 for nine. Can they get it up to 150 is the, is the argument or the discussion. Here is Leon Williams now facing up to Jamal Williams. Here is he facing up and he goes back and he's uh, not playing the best of shots at a slower pitch delivery outside of them. Brings up the end of over number 27. And the scoreline reads 122 for nine. Leon Williams and seven and nine and Damien Williams and seven. Good, good going, good going by these tailenders, as we would say in the, the olden days or our young days, Greg. And it's looking good. At least it's what the partnership is. Eighteen. That's that's good runs to be getting from your ten and eleven here. So. Well, I could tell you that the biggest partnership was 64, 54 between Mark First and Mead and. Uh, young Christian Yearwood, but this one is the second, no, actually the, yes, it's the second, no. Yearwood and uh, Kajwan put on 19. So this is the third highest uh, partnership so far, and we're going to have a bowling change, a little bit of medium pace from young Stevel Rodney. From this, the uh, commentary box and as the sun bathes Salem Park with a little bit of cloud shadowing the park and moving across the, the outfield. Here is a uh, Yes, Devil Rodney running in now to bowl to Dino Baker. 
not Dina Baker, but that but the but Damien Williams and scatters his stumps center and off scattered all over the place bales flying all over the place and that's what I was saying Trevor he should have brought back the pace not really go to try and bring a new bowler in just bring back uh, the other bowlers because the other bowlers had overs there and uh, even Jamal KB could have been brought back to finish up the innings but Stevel Rodney has come back and with his first delivery in a new spell clean up the tail as you may say and now the end result is 122 MNI 2 for nine, the, for the, ten. the one two spin combination of um, Dino Baker and so uh, Andy White did a you know huge number on the batting. And like I said, from Christian left, that was it. Everything went downhill. They didn't cope well with the spin. Yeah. Well, clearly for the uh, MNI two, they would be very disappointed with this um, uh, result in terms of batting, winning the toss and batting first. 122 for all, and uh, we can run through the bowling figures quickly for you. Well, remember, Gregory, runs on the board is runs on the board. Already well, made. Well, Trevor, we'll see what happens, but let's just give you a run through uh, the battle line up first, and then the, 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 the bowling, and then Trevor, we'll have a little bit of chat before the break. Can we can have the interval? We're going to have the interval, or we're going to start back. We'll just check with the umpires on that. But let me just run through. Christian Yearwood was bowled by Dino Baker for 43. Skajwan Sullivan caught Jamari Lane, bowled Travis Harrison for 11. McPherson Mead caught Tevik Benjamin brilliantly on the mid wicket boundary of bowling of Zawande White for 26. Warren Smith was bowled by Zawande White for 7. Theodore Fry, LBW, Zawande White for 1. Aiden Liver caught and bowled Zawande White for 0. Naim Naimaya Young, Bo LBW is the one the white for not. Trevon Pollard, LBW Dino Baker for not. Rashawn Fenton, LBW Dino Baker for not. Damon Williams caught bold uh Stevel Rodney for seven. And Leo Williams not out on nine. Bowling figures for you. Jamel KB, five overs, one maiden, 14 runs, no wicket. Travis Harrison, three overs, no maiden, 27 runs, one wicket. Stevel Rodney, 2.1 overs, 17 runs, one wicket. Dino Baker, 8 overs, 3 maidens, 25 runs, 3 wickets. And the pick of the bowlers, Zawande White, 8 overs, 3 maidens, 26 runs, 5 wickets. And Jamal Williams, just the 1 over for 8 runs. Uh, we'll get the fall of wickets for you in a sec. Uh, quickly, uh, fall of wickets, uh, Kajwan Sullivan was 19, McFirst Mead, 54, 73, sorry. Uh, Warren Smith fell out when the score was 90. Theodore Fry, 97, Aiden Liven, 97, Christian Yearwood, 103, Naimaya Young, 103, Trevon Pollard, 103, Rashawn Fenton, 104 in the last wicket, Damien Willers, 122. So, batting first, toss and batting first, Mon MNI 2 in the first of four matches in the 50 over tournament by the Monster Cricket Association. Uh, uh, at the break, 122 all out, and uh, MNI 1 will need 123 for victory. Trevor, comments? Well, from what I've seen, from what I've seen, it's, you know, it's, it's nice to have the guys back out on cricket. The feeling team was crisp and agile, some wonderful catches. Control bowling by the two spinners, Baker and White. But, you know, all in all, it's, it's, a new start. So there's a bit of rust. But it could it would be iron though. It's lovely to have cricket in the park. It's nice to see. Individuals who are at home could log on to Live Island Events. YouTube. Their YouTube channel and view the whole game. It's it's a nice game for you to watch. Excellent stuff. And then Trevor, uh, let's just talk a bit about the scenery again because it's a lovely day for cricket. It's a lovely outfield, lovely atmosphere. Uh, the, the, the sun is, is, is in full glory and definitely a, a fantastic day for cricket. The MNI 2 won the toss. They decided to bat and they've only scored 122. But nevertheless, uh, we had a good score from uh, young Yearwood who had a lot of chances, but nevertheless capitalized and made 43. I was the back of the back of the MNI. And bowling for, by someone the White was remarkable. 
was really exceptional. He picked up five rings, <laughs> captain, um, uh, leading from the front, and supported very ably by Dino Baker, who is a very experienced player in the Munshot uh, scheme of things, and who ended up with three wickets, and definitely both spinners really broke through the batting and got the result that probably they wanted. Uh, uh, maybe you could have picked it up less, but nevertheless, 122 would be I, satisfactory. I love the variety that I saw from both spinners. Using, you know, the changes, faster straight ball, which, you know, brought them some good wickets. And, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to see. It's nice to see. We see a good future here for cricket in Montserrat. And, you know, well, Trevor, we're going to take our halftime break and we should be back in about another 30 minutes or so with the second half of the game, the first game in the Munster Cricket Association uh, 50 over league uh, uh, here on Munster at Salem Park. And we want to say to our viewers, stay tuned because we'll be back with you very shortly with the second half. Don't forget, tune in tomorrow from about 2 o'clock for the 2020 version of the Munster Cricket Association League here and really and truly it's really fantastic if I may say it myself to have cricket back in Montreal to have cricket uh, in the Leeward Islands for that matter of fact and to, to know that we are playing cricket at, at the lower levels to get our overall cricket structures right I want to tell folks as well the well anticipated uh, West CWI elections and AGM will be held tomorrow from about 10 o'clock in the morning. And surely Monday morning newspapers will be looking to see what transpires there. But I'm telling you, the Leeward Islands and myself, who uh, will be the representative uh, along with Carl Powell, are fully behind uh, the Ricky Skerritt, uh, Kisho Shalo team that who have turned the corners with West Indies cricket and have now put us back in the reckoning for moving up the, the, the leadership board in terms of dominance again. And really and truly, uh, kudos to the, the executive of West Indies Cricket and also to the players on the field, the management team and CEO and all that who have really stuck to their guns and really bringing now joy back to West Indies Cricket fans. And we're hoping for months that we can fit in and, and, and help. And do the same. I, I must say, I don't know if it's because of the management team, but you could surely see a difference in West Indies cricket at this point. So I hope if it's, you know, because of the change in management, I'm looking for bigger and better things. Absolutely. And we, uh, with that said, we are going to be taking a short break and we'll be back with you in a, a few minutes to start the second half of proceedings here at Salem Park.
Association 50 over tournament here played between MNI 2 and MNI, MNI 1 and MNI 2. And we're now seeing the innings of the MNI 2 team, Ch MNI 1, chasing 123 for victory. And they are immediately off the mark, is it? Yeah, they're immediately off the mark. Damien Williams bowling to uh, Stevel Rodney, playing up into the offside. He picks up the first run, and they're one without loss in the chase. As we see Damien Williams coming away from the far end, and he's going to bowl into Joshua Grant. Comes a pass down by a lane now. Bowls to Grant. Grant is driving up on the offside. He's not going to get any run. As Liam Williams feels that extra cover, and the score remains at one without loss, chasing... 123 for victory. Chasing 123 for victory. This is going to be Damien Williams from the far end. Comes in now to bolt to Grant. And Grant lets it go. Taken outside the line of the all stump. Is that Friday keeper? Yeah, no, no. Fry. Well, is that it's, been a, it's been a while, Basil. And Mark First Meat can do some keeping no, as no, well. No, no, but that's Theodore. <laughs> it is Theodore Fry. What is this? <laughs> I tell you, everybody is multi talented nowadays, Basil. Good afternoon, everybody. It's, it's very windy. And um, this wind has picked up somewhat. But it's a beautiful Saturday afternoon. They'll need to get how many, Cordella? 123 to win. Here comes Williams from the far end. Bows now to Grant, and Grant gets a good delivery and uh, has good judgment. I think that he let that go, that one go on, on length and uh, went through, taken by Fry. There's no run. Basil, I uh, just want to remind the folks who are out there, just share the YouTube uh, information. It's YouTube, Live Violence YouTube, and definitely you'll get the second half of the action here, Basil. Well. And somebody said Coach Red as well. So here he comes now. Damien Williams comes up again, bows to Grant, and Grant gets into line, pushes up on the offside, and uh, the skipper, Warrell Smith, darts in from point fields, and uh, there is no run. But so it is one with our loss. But you do feel that the MNI two would rule the, the, the chance of, of batting first and not really getting a, a really proper total to defend. It's still 122, but they could have gotten a bigger, much bigger total with the start they had. Yes, they were lucky too to to, to get that contribution from, from Yearwood. Here comes Williams again, Bowes. This is better. Just on about the leg stump. Turn into the onside. And uh, one more to the total. Looks like Chevron Pollard, who came in there from Milan. Basil, I was making the point about Pollard in his first match at the senior level for, for in cricket in Montreal. And he had a little thing going with Dino Baker until Dino gave him, outspoxed him, the cricket delivery, and he was trapped. But he looked pretty well in defense. <laughs> he did they, and they, they're, they're very good friends, eh? So, you know, I would have loved to see that rivalry. So, at the end of over number one, M and I, M and I won trying to get up to 123 are is it two without loss? Cardella, two without loss? Two without loss. So it looks like McPherson Mead is going to bowl from this, the pavilion end and he'll be bowling some off spinners. Skipper Worrell Smith making sure that he has the field that he wants. Man at slip. Man out at... Uh, okay, there's going to be an exchange because Yeo is not too fit. I think he actually injured himself trying to get a run. He's, he's now moved from backward point to short extra cover. There's a man at cover. Mid-off. Somebody should be down at the long leg boundary. Deep mid-wicket. Short and wide Miran. And a man behind square comes up and bowls, and he gets a good delivery just on about the off stump. Umpire Ben Greenaway, maybe he needs to get rid of the hat. 
That hut will, will be heading down to St. Kitsun Nevis in a bit. Ini comes once more to bowl, and this time he lets it go. Taken by Fry, who looks pretty good. And uh, he himself, McPherson Mead, has lost his hat. Not from the window. Has he tucked in his pocket? Yep. <laughs> there you go. Compare Ben Mead. Ben holds on to his hat. And this time he's driving his... Oh! He could have been caught there at first slip. And uh, the man from first slip just didn't pick it up. Who's that at first slip? Well, it's uh, Casual Sullivan. But Is that Casual? And he's very upset with himself. It was a sharp chance, but Very man. sharp chance indeed. And uh, maybe his line of sight might have missed him there because of the keeper. Who is not a small guy, Fry. It's not a small guy by any means. Now he's been pushed back. Skipper has told him, you know, give yourself some room at first slip. Two runs from that one. Comes up now, Bowes, and again is outside the line of the Austin. This time he's beaten. Kajun Sullivan applauds. Well, Mark Fosimid is a wily veteran, and definitely he's going to be, he's very amazing too, because he doesn't give away much runs on his bowling. Old, 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 school. old school. Grant on three, Rodney's got one. Comes up now, and he comes quietly forward again. And about three players converge on that delivery. And Basil, captain uh, Zoan De White, really stepped up to the plate uh, the, in the first half of the game and really bowled his team into a winning position, if you may say that. Yes, yeah, so what, he picked up five? Five for 20. And uh, Baker, Dino, picked up three. Here he goes now again, ball short, and he's hammering that one behind square. It will run into the boundary now. That four runs, too short there from Mac first Mead. It's not often that you see him losing his way. But at and uh, this one a bit too short. And hammered down over square. And he got four runs. So that is seven now to. Yeah, go ahead, seven. So seven now to, to Grant. And the total after two overs, eight without loss. Yeah, one of the things I want to say, Basil, is that um, the, Mark first Mead was distracted somewhat when he was bowling that delivery as it hit the. Um, yeah, he hit, he hit, he hit, he hit, his hand hit the, the, the stump. And probably that's what made him bowl that shot. But a bad delivery that was dispatched and seen as bad by the, the batsman and picked up uh, very lucky in a, to have gotten an eye-opener, if you call it that. No, it was, a good, it, it was some, a good shot. You're sporting some new shakes? Thank you. Uh, you here, those? here comes Williams now to bowl to Rodney. And Rodney go for an uh, eerie, fairy drive outside the line of the off-stump. Beaten, taken there by Fry. And uh, there is no run. Basil, I want to say something about Rodney and, 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 and Grant and also Yearwood and, 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 and Sullivan as well. Those four players are, are seemingly going to be the core of the top order for Montserrat. And these guys are looking really confident when they go to bat. They're not, they're not looking to be afraid. Maybe some, a little bit of judgment errors, but really looking confident when they go to bat. Williams from the far end is coming around the wicket. And now it bows and it's taken... Outside the line of the Austin. It's a bit wide. In fact, I was going to say that one was a bit wayward. And maybe this is, maybe he's disagreeing with umpire Jeff Lane. You know, bowlers always say, wide? Or they seem to not be too happy. They, they, they have to look at that, 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 that marker and that, 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 that guide that suggests that you can't bowl outside that line. And that one was a bit outside. Indeed. So it's a beautiful Saturday afternoon here on the Rock. Two slips, gully, point, extra cover, mid off, mid on. Here comes Williams again, passes on by a lane, and this time he's driving, finds the man straight out at short, extra. That is uh, Williams, yes. and uh, there is no run. That's Total. called a spectator's catch, man. Mm -hmm. Hit hard into the ground. Nine without loss. I'm looking for a man I think might be down at fine leg, am I correct? Yes, there should be somebody. Should be somebody down at fine. Yes. Someone Man there. out at wide. Mid on. Mid off. And Trevon Pollard. Here, here he comes now. And both. Oh, and this time he's beaten outside the line of the arm stump. Good length, good line. Coming there from Williams. There's actually a man down at third man. So we were missing two players. So we had Young down at third man. And Livan. And Livan down at Fine Lake. Fine Lake. It will be interesting to see these two young 
a guy's bowling, really literal, live on and young, young, yeah, yeah, who I actually like, like this guy a lot. He has a future in cricket. He does. He, he does. Part. It's Brian Stephanie's son, by the way. Oh, there you go. Here he goes now. Comes up now. Both short. And he wow. goes to pull this away. Signal wide by umpire lane. So that's four uh, whites. whites. Five. So that will be five runs. Am I correct? Yep. So very qu quickly, the total is on to, should be what? 14. 14? Yes. 14 without loss. This was a bit short and weird going down the leg side. Uh, Stevel Rodney tried to swing it down behind square. <laughs> missed everything. So too did the keeper. I think, Basil, that Damien is trying, striving for a bit too much pace too early. This is his second over. And Lionel Lent has to be his key. He doesn't have the pace already. So I think if he focuses on a little bit more Lionel Lent, he, he had beaten the ball before. He's got the breeze behind him, Gregory. And he comes up now, balls, and he's jumping out of the way. Something oh, the bail happened off. there. The bail fell off. And <laughs> Williams will have to go and start all over again. I hope you didn't think that he was No, <laughs> I, said, I was saying, wait, where is he going? <laughs> then I actually forgot that um, it's too breezy. They've, they've done the right thing now, which I actually had mentioned earlier, is to get rid of the bails, you know. Well, the wind has picked up some knots, Basil. Mm. We've noticed that after, just after the, at the break that the wind here picked up significantly, and you could see it in the breeze, in the trees, uh, moving, uh, dancing a bit more than normal. In fact, they've mentioned that they're going to change the hurricane season from June to May. We are now into March. Here he comes up now, Bulls. And he again, he's fishing outside the line of the arm stump. Good bowling here by Damian Williams, leader of this pack. And he's bowling accurately, bowling fast. Absolutely, really, really fantastic stuff by these two, um, by the opening bowlers, really. Um, definitely, uh, Mark First Me just had one way of delivering his bowling and Damien as well. Just trying for a little bit too much pace, but he's bowling really quick. He's bowling quick, and I always like to see the, the, the energy that's in Damien Williams' bowling. He really, really is a, is a work of art and really would need to focus if he's going to make his way into the Lewin Allen's team. Here he comes up now again, bows to Rodney. And caught! No, this one just fell in front of the man at first slip. And uh, that is uh, McPherson Mead. Well, and there's not much buzzy that yeah. can be done there. And then we saw Live and he just came around the corner from behind the fine leg area. So one there to, 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 to Rodney. But this one actually took the outside edge and just fell short of the man at first slip. Well, yeah, well, that one didn't bounce as much as well, but he did induce the fall shot, got the edge, and, and just fell a bit short. Uh, I, I see... Um, McPherson Mead, like, uh, saying to Fry, maybe you should have went for this one because it fell more in front of you than, Basil, than anything who, who else. Who you said he's staying to? Fry. <laughs> I think Fry. <laughs> Fry might have something to say about 15 it. without loss. Here comes Williams to bowl to Grant, and it's outside the line of the off stump. It's taken there by the keeper, and there is no run. Well, I think Fry is saying to uh, the, uh, Mark First Mead, hey, this guy is bowling a bit fast. Just now, I think when he, when he played that, uh, when he ca took that ball, he hit his glove so hard, he looked back at Mark First Mead and said, hey, that, that one was a bit nippy. And Damien Williams is bowling fast. There's no doubt that he's going to bowl fast, but he needs to be accurate. He doesn't have a big total to defend. They're 15, and this is the third over. There's 40 overs these guys have to bat. And Basil really and truly is going to take some real good tight bowling to really restrict the, the MNI 1 from stopping them from getting to this 123. Well, um, it's a small total, but we also know that uh, runs on the board. Runs on the board. But um, I don't think that they should have a, a, a problem getting these, uh, these runs if they buckle down and take the time. 50 overs is a long way. And um, again, M and I too didn't do justice when they, they, they got their chance to bat. You're so right, Basil. Well, it says the left hander, um, uh, the opening bat here now, Rodney, that's going to face up to Mark first Mead. And as I said, Basil, these guys have been very aggressive. Comes up now, Bowes, and uh, he's trying to work this run around the corner. Comes off his uh, thigh pad. Does uh, Rodney, and there is no run. Total stays on 15. We're into over number four. Comes up now, Bows, and he's driving hard into the ground. Finds the skipper out at that uh, wide mid-off position. 
McPherson Mead, who has been around for like donkey years. Long time. This guy has been a servant of Montreal cricket. Yeah, I think we need to actually uh, recognize McPherson. He's been all facets of all cricket. Champion of a game. Let's of a man. Up. Comes up now, bowls, and he lets it go wide outside the line of the off stump. Umpire. And Basil, to talk about McPherson, he reminds me of Shander Paul, his attitude to the cricket. It's like these guys can play forever. They, they, they don't look like they're out of uh, any form or in terms of physical um, ability or anything. McPherson Mead comes up again, both to Rodney, and Rodney opens the face of the bat. Wants a single, but some good work there by the man. Uh, that's casual. I'd still up and there was no run. The, the thing about people like McPherson is that you'll have to get him arrested. <laughs> for him to stop playing cricket. You know, he, he enjoys he enjoys his game. Of course, he's part of the football work uh, mm. as well. Yes, yes. Or oh, the yes. football setup as well. Not as a player, but, as but a, he's around a them. Groundsman. And groundsman. a groundsman and all of that. And he was a groundsman for cricket. You there know, you go. He's, he's really been... And he's a farmer. Yes, absolutely. You, yeah. go. you got to respect these guys, yeah? Here he comes up again, Bowles. And again, he just comes quietly forward. Plays it late, does it, Rodney? There is no run. We gotta say good afternoon again to the Live Island Events family. And uh, well, so much you can say about these <laughs> these guys, eh? The Basil, the so Muslim Cricket Association cannot say thank you or even start to thank. Me comes up bows and uh, he's beaten outside the line of the off stump. That's the end of the fourth over, and uh, M and I won. Trying to get up to 123, they're 15 without loss. Yeah, what I was saying is that the, the, something great has happened when Live Island came on the, the scene. And a lot of people in Montserrat probably didn't understand what was happening. But they've just changed the whole ball game as it, bec as it comes to the, the fact that we're in this uh, bubble or whatever you want to say, this pandemic or every aspect of it to be able to bring live cricket and to carry it live and for the whole world to be able to log in and check and see what's happening on Montserrat and to know that Montserrat still exists and there are things happening in Montserrat. I think that, that you can't, I mean, when you're giving awards, you have to identify people, whether they're getting paid or not. This is something that is a phenomenon. Here comes Williams from the far end to bowl to Grant. And Grant gets a good delivery, swinging. Uh, there's a lot of breeze out there. And uh, Williams is running in with that breeze at, at his back. And he uh, pushes into the onside where Pollard feels. And uh, the, there is no run. Total stays on 15. Basil, the Monster Cricket Association is really appreciative of all the people who have worked together to help us organize the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports, and all of the other support staff, the scorers, the umpires, everyone who has come on board now to make Monster Cricket happen and happen live. William comes up, pause, good, very good delivery there again, very tight on about the off stump and the injured yearwood hobbles across as a deep to <laughs> Don't forget, guys, we are having the 2020 version uh, tomorrow at, uh, for starting from 2. And it's really, really, again, I say it's exciting times for Monster Cricket as we get our players on the field of play and we can make an assessment where we are with cricket on Monster Basel. <laughs> so here comes Williams again. Damien Williams from the far end passes on pale lane now on bows and he's driving. Lovely stroke, wants a single and he bursts through uh, the hand of that guy out at, oh, that's Fenton out at uh, Madoff. And they run two. He thought he had it covered. Thought he had it, <laughs> thought he had it. The last information we got is that uh, there seems to be power or electricity back in Kojo Head and St. Peter's. And I don't know if it's heading its way to, 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 uh, to Salem. So maybe the current is just coming this way. I don't know how they get in that work. But um, don't know where it started. Maybe they started in Germans. At the start of the power Sounds plant. like a motorcade. The power plant, Basil. In the onside, we'll get a single. Pollard is quickly onto it. You know, Pollard brings some excitement, Basil. I mean, I tell you, one would not associate, uh, associate our soccer king and one who plays very high in the Calypso Arena on Debu to be out here on the cricket field. So that means you've, you've never seen him keep 
Yeah, I've seen him keep it at, at junior level, but I'm yeah. saying it's the first time at senior level that I've seen him play, and really, truly, he's looking pretty nifty. Well, I, I think that his name was called in the draft. Yes. So how did his name get in the draft? Well, <laughs> I tell you, you never know, you never yeah, know. Yeah, there you go. 18 without loss it is. Rodney is on two. Grant is on ten. And uh, Damian Williams around the wicket. In he comes now, two slips of weight. And he gets in there, bows to Rodney. Rodney stands up straight, gets tight into line, pushes up on the offside, and there's no run. I want to say big shout out to my uh, colleague uh, Kuma Rodney, who has just uh, joined us here. I mean, not here, but I am joined the, the video audience and looking at the, the cricket on YouTube. Always one who supports Mansa Cricket. Uh, uh, director in Leeward Islands Cricket and on the West Indies Cricket Board as well. So a man that really has worked hard, Antigua themselves would have had their tournaments and probably has one that was suspended because of COVID-19. Williams comes in now to bowl to Rodney and this time Rodney gets a short delivery, Ooh. hammers that one. It's a bit awkward, he did, but he got the top edge. It's a no ball as well, signaled by umpire uh, Jeff Lane. That one has gone for six. But it was short, it was rearing, and he went back and pulled that one over deep square leg. And, um, well, got the top. That's what I'm saying. The shot came off. Oh, yes, it did. But that was a risky shot. I don't, was. Know, he, he, I don't think he had me, uh, all the control that he needed, but he got in a bat on it that went for six, and it was a no ball as well. But that one was a bit risky. Good it, shot. It, it was short, it was, it was rearing towards his head area. It was pounding and shot, and in fact, it is a no ball, as um, umpire Lane has um, indicated. That shows you the and effort Williams actually just put into that into pretty, that delivery. Pretty accurate. Just just, just an about off stump, and that one was short, head height, and really rearing in. He got the ball on it and got it out for six, but really. I don't know. We, 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 were, we were once upon a time got replaced, Basil. I don't know. My, my technician is trying his best out here. He's done a good job. I mean, I won't complain, but a little bit of a replay would have really been nice. <laughs> Anyways, Pollard is out here <laughs> doing his gym, gym, gym antics. Uh. <laughs> gym antics. And maybe, maybe because he's so short, he looks funny, right? <laughs> you see him in the helmet, Basil, out there with the back, left hand. Oh, what a guy. <laughs> oh, well, we got so the ball there. is back, and we see a little Takuma. And to the folks who might be watching wherever you are, uh, you, you know what I like about this virtual thing is like if there's a funeral in America, England. People ask you, "Can you please attend the funeral?" <laughs> so then you you know you're home and you put on your jacket and your tie and you sit down in front of your computer or your phone and you say, "People call and you say, no, no, I can't talk to you now. I'm at a funeral." Brazil, I, I love it. I've open. attended about 15 funerals since the virtually, lockdown. You know, virtually, virtually. Absolutely, yes. right, mm -hmm. right, right. Put on my suit. Did you go to the after party as well? No. Virtually? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been to quite a few funerals so far. Right. Well, Let's see what the response is going to be. <laughs> Here he comes now. William from the far end to bowl to Rodney. And Rodney gets up with deliveries. It's a no ball anyway. And uh, <laughs> it just dropped again by, <laughs> by Fenton. The ball is going all over the place. <laughs> wow, Damien Williams is, uh, is, is flustered. He's flustered. He's, yeah. he's, he's not but, happy but, but, with But himself. I'm surprised that that one wasn't called a no ball as well. Well, I thought For it was height, a no ball. thought it would have been. Anyway, wow. the umpires have it under control. So had he taken the catch? No, he it, no, no. It's a no ball. It's a free hit. Oh, that one, yeah. Well, it yes. was a free hit anyway. You're but right, I'm saying right. that ball was um, waist border, high border line, or border maybe line. above waist high. He was trying to bowl a slow ball, eh? <laughs> 26 it is without loss. 26 without last chase in 123 Basil. Mm -hmm. This would be an easy walk in the park Indeed. for MNI 1, who really came back supporting that match. They were yeah. 90 for 2, MNI 2, and all hell broke loose when Zawande White took the ball. So da Damian Williams has bowled three overs, no maiden, 20 runs, no wicket. So Williams has gone for, for 20 out of the 26. Mark first and me, two overs, Basil, one maiden, and six runs. Let me tell you, there's no one knocking at the door. It's the wind. Wind has just gotten really hostile here. Eh? McPherson Mead uh, bows there to, to Rodney. And Rodney turns it around the corner, and there is no run. Basil, I tell you all sorts of things. You know, when the door is closed and the wind is banging, you assume a whole ton of things, isn't it? Yeah. 
Mac Russell Mead goes in now again, bows to Rodney, and Rodney's driving down the ground on the onside. And looks like uh, Damian Williams who feels down at the short mid-on position. The total stays on 26. A number of the guys put in this broad, floppy hat. Rich Richardson was the one that brought light to this hat. Comes up now, bows, and he's gone. He's bold. Played a bad shot there, did Rodney. Played all over the shot. Played across the line, the wrong line. He was trying to tug this one through the mid-on, or mid-wicket area, through the onside. And uh, was bold there, by Mike First and Mead. And uh, M and I won. They've lost their first wicket. They're 26 for one. And uh, uh, Rodney, bold Mead for nine. 18 balls with one six. Well, yeah, Basil, a bad shot. And really the quicker delivery and really pushed you. And I'm pretty happy to see that Zawandi White is coming out at number three. Because really and truly, uh, we would want to see him bat pretty early, get a lot of the bowling, and get some batting practice. Because this youngster needs to get as much time out in the crease as possible uh, in the wicket. Uh, he's bowled well. And let's see now as, as captain batting at number three, which is a good position for him. I would even love to see him bat number three for the national team as well, Basil, because this youngster has to make his mark as a dominant force in Munster cricket and also in Lewis cricket if he's going to move beyond uh, th those shores. My, my question to you is, Gregory, Mr. President, is he a batting all-rounder or a bowling all-rounder? <laughs> that's a good question. That Actually, that's a jackpot question. And I really, what I would say, he's, he's a top Top batsman or top bowler, but he's of late been bowling much better than batting. And I think that's why I'm saying I'm glad he's coming out number three to give him a lot of time out there to get his batting skills back to where it was. I mean, he had a little technical difficulty. Mark Russell Mead comes up to him this time. He comes forward, half cocked, really, as if he's a bit uncertain, maybe a bit nervous. He's yeah, the and that, that's the point. That's the point. He's, he's the captain rusty. of his team, 26 for one. Trevor Perkins, old school, is uh, to the back of us. And, of course, our brother, once fastest man in Montserrat, not now, <laughs> comes up. Oh, uh, to somebody, you got to back up, keep back up, and stay in the game. We remember when Peter Creeley was in Montserrat and one of the fastest around the Leeward Islands. It's amazing what... I'll leave it there. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. There's a little thing that we all carry in front of us. The stomach, the belly. Oh, your gut? The guts. <laughs> so many names. <laughs> Only Basil Chambers. I tell you, you have, you, you have the right. Yeah, because you, you have a disclaimer. I don't have one. <laughs> I'll leave that. He's Trevor, the treasurer of the Trevor, Monster Cricket Association. Trevor's going to come in next with you yes. while I take a yeah, where you throat sabbatical. Mm -hmm. Comes up now, bows. He's Whoa, outside the line wow. of the arm stuff. Beaten yeah. there. He's taken foot, by the keeper and there's no run. As in his footwork was not the best there. He, he was coming down center stump. The ball was outside off. So after you, Gregory, uh, it's going to be you and Trev. You, you do the ball. Yeah, thank you very much, Basil. And of course, we are grateful to the fact that you could do your stint. We expect you back as well. And uh, Trevor, you've come in, and really and truly, we've got a good game. A good game. We could have been a little more competitive had the runs made by MNI two in batting first been about uh, maybe 200, 175, 200 would have given us a bit more. Well, that would have been great if. Uh he would have stuck around and he had the support required because um, they looked well in the early stages, but um, the back end was just a landslide, per se. Well, I think more of Macfors Mead getting out to a superb catch was more of what broke the back because Yearwood was playing and he was having his PSG of luck. Damien Williams, away from the far end, comes up, Polish delivery, driven right, and he's... Well, 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 well. Great job by a good stop by Yearwood, but I, it looked like uh, somewhat of a catch. Just went to him, just under bounce. Ah, played a little bit eerie off the pads there by Grant. And uh, could have been a bit more trouble had that gone a little fuller. Anyways, no damage done. Good stop, and Damon Williams will continue 
from the far end. He looks good. He looks fast. But he's uh, not really settled into a good rhythm in terms of the line of length. Here is he up to the wicket. The ball to Grant. Grant is driving. Lovely stroke. But straight to the man at mid-off. And there is no run. But Grant driving a foolish delivery on about set the stump up on the offside. And there is no run. A good shot for not. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. You could see the difference in the confidence of Grant and the other players. So, leading from the front. Trevor, I can't tell you about the picturesque view that we have from the position we're in. Here is Williams after we get the ball to Grant. Grant is getting a full pitch. Trevor, straight back past the ball. He's going to run pretty close to the boundary. Let's see. He's chased past. And uh, young uh, Fenton was able to chase it down. And two runs to Grant. And he moves on by 2 to 12. The score now 28 for 1. Yeah, uh, Williams hasn't seemed to have gotten uh, to a comfort zone. He's nippy, he's quick, but not to his comfort zone. Well, he's not really consistent. He's bowling full, he's bowling short, he's bowling wide. He's bowling fast. And I think when you're bowling a new ball, new cherry, you have to get that line right, especially in a uh, 20, uh, 50 over game. Here is he. Up to the wicket to bowl to Grant. Grant is getting a delivery right on the pad. He's trying to run. I don't know where he's going because Kristen here with all with his limp and all was able to get around pretty quickly and there is no run. Uh, 28 for one. We're in the course of over 7 of 40. I don't think the overs are of, any, of much concern to us because the sunshine is bright and the, no, the cloud cover is very limited. So we are definitely going to get those 40 overs in barring any in, in, inclement weather that we unforeseen. Here is Williams up to the wicket to bowl to Grant. Grant is getting a delivery outside the off stump, and there is no run. Williams is really rearing up a, a, a head of steam here, but not directing it to force the batsman into any uh, false shots. So he needs to line it. He needs to get it uh, consistently on a line. Mark first meet on the other hand has about three overs, two maidens, six runs, one wicket. So clearly the spinners have done the job here. And uh, Zawandi White, Dino Baker, and now Mark First Mead. Williams up to the wicket. Ball to Grant. Grant is flicking it into the onside. And young Pollard, who runs in from a whitish mid on uh, area, feels and the no run. Brings up the end of over number seven. And there are seven overs. Uh, MNI won, chasing 123 for victory, uh, 28 for one. Not, not looking bad, Gregory, as, as you've said before. Only significant cloud cover is over the wonderful volcano to our left and a bit over the ocean. Nice view at Garibaldi Hill and St. George's Hill. And, nice day in the park. And if I must say, to the back of us, is looking rather blue and limited cloud cover as well. So we are in for a, a full game, it looks, at the moment. You never know it weather. When Lovely the wind blows so hard. A lovely, a lovely day for cricket. <laughs> Give it a bit of English. A lovely day for cricket, eh? As we see your camera pan panoramic scanning. Here is Mark First Mead. Bowls and driven into the offside by Zawande White. Zawande White's footwork is still a little bit of a question for me. He's driving away from his body. He needs to move his back foot across and his front foot needs to go to the pitch of the ball. Uh, I, I must describe it like a good coach. Right. But McFirst Mead, it has been a handful. Zawande White has faced uh, some four deliveries and is yet to get off the mark. McFirst Mead up to wicket to bowl to White. White is going back and not playing a confident shot at all. I don't even think the shot that, that shot was there with his footwork again. He just stood still and just flared after with his bat. He's now looking to say, this is how I should have done it. But again, he's in the early stage of his innings, five deliveries, and he would need to stay there for a significant amount of time to get uh, acclimatized. Here is me. Up to the wicket, the ball to White again, a good delivery. Mark first meet is bowling well, really forcing the batsman into making good judgment because that ball just on about off stump or outside and uh, moving away from the, from the, hey, he's bowling off spin, so he looks like he's bowling all drifters here. Nothing looks like he's turning, Trevor. Well, straight going through, I guess, trying to force around the white to make a, a, a shot or to send something to first. 
Here is he going on the back foot, steering it out into the offside. And there is no run. Ben, umpire Ben Greenaway, Sylvester Ben Greenaway, signals um, two left in the over to his colleague, umpire Jeff Lane, who is our a regionally certified umpire. I must say that because we don't get much notice at that level at this moment in terms of our umpiring. And we will have to do something about that because Jeff, I think, is ready for his regional debut. And sure, well, he might have um, uh, umpired in a few uh, Leeward Islands uh, tournament matches, but needs to get up into the West Indies uh, regional set up. And here's a drive. Oh, my goodness, Damon Williams. It was, was caught napping there because that was a drive, a full blooded drive by Zawan the White. Came with some steam, but should have done better uh, 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 as a man. To him and through him. So, <laughs> like that, it was like a, a tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> that brings up uh, the end of the over 32 for one. Zawan the White gets off the mark with a four, and really one or uh, two uh, deliveries for, for me. The second boundary struck off him. He's bowled four overs for 10 runs. And it's going to be Williams to continue as we see the umpire signal in the second power play. Uh, the umpires are looking for the scorers and they got them. The second power play is in now been signaled by umpire lane. Eight overs bowled so far. So MNI 1 chasing 123 for victory. Made by MNI 2. MNI 2 won the toss and batted. Uh, Kristen Yearwood got 43. Mark Persimede got 27. Uh, those were the significant scores. Zawan Dewey picked up 5 for 26 off 8. And Dino Baker picked up 3 for 27 off 8. I think that's the summary of the first half of play. And uh, now we're into the second half. Uh, Stever Rodney was bowled by Mark Meade for 9. Uh, Joshua Grant not out on 12. Zawan Dewey not out on 4. And the score 32 for 1. Uh, we are in the course of over number 9. Here is Williams up to the wicket to bowl to Grant. is driving, not really getting it where he would have essayed it to be. But we'll pick up two because he was looking to drive to extra cover. Got a thick inside edge and he went through mid-wicket for two. And young Pollard chased after it like a hare and got it. Uh, <laughs> don't know if you watch those dog racing when the leg got a hare and the dogs have to chase. But definitely got after that ball. And there's two runs to Grant. Team moves to 14. And the score now 34 for one in over number nine. As uh, here what it looks like he's going to hop down to fine leg. And he probably might have to go off. I mean, I don't know if he's trapped up. Did he strap up that ankle? He should have strapped up. He should have strapped that ankle. He got a little bit of a bad fall in his batting innings. As Damien Williams comes up to bowl to Grant, comes up bowls to Grant. Grant is getting a delivery. Fall shot. Fall shot. A little wider. And he chased after it, really, a, a nothing shot. Because that shot could have gotten him not much but the, of a run down to third man, an edge to the keeper, or edge to slip. Feeling innocence. Right. Feeling outside that off stuff. Well, Damien Williams will get some credit and will get some confidence. Uh, from that, he's not bowled pretty well, he's not bowled well enough at, at all. He's 24 runs or 4.2 overs, yet to pick up a wicket, and has been all over the shop, in my opinion. Here is he from the far end, and my silence me with that. Comes up, bowls to Grant. Grant is getting a delivery on the pad, flick it, flicks it into the onside, and there is no run. I want to say good afternoon to all the folks in Nevis, St. Kitts, Anguilla, St. Martin, and Antigua, and all of the other islands around us. And just to say, all the folks who are watching this uh, live stream from Live Island Events on our YouTube feed, I want to say, uh, hope that you're enjoying the cricket. Uh, there's one or two trickles of spectators, and that's what we expect. Not really a full crowd, but here is he up to the wicket. A good delivery. York Allen, well played in the end by Grant, but a good delivery by uh, Williams. Williams there. And thinking, keeping on his thinking cap. You could see the adjustment now in his bowling. He has reduced his speed, trying to direct that ball to where he specifically wants to finish. 
and that is what he needs to do. I mean, we know the talent of, of Damien Williams. Really, really a, a, a first-class talent we have here in Williams. He's been really around the, the, the game for some time now. I think he's about 27 or thereabouts and really would need to work his way into the Liberal Islands team. Comes up, bowls to Grant. Grant is driving off the thick outside edge, but control shot over the man at backward point who's, who's a diminutive uh, Warrell Smith. And surely he would have had to put on double his size or, or triple to have caught uh, not his height to catch that. Great shot, great shot. Seeing the position and the fielders who are in that position, that's a properly orchestrated shot. Well, I think that maybe you now I've seen that, that probably what he was trying with the previous shot that he tried and didn't get a touch on it. So he, he got four for that. He moves to 18 as now 38 for one. Here is Williams up to the wicket to bowl to Grant. Grant is driving back up the track, fielded by the bowler who throws it back in frustration. Really can't get any penetration. I think it's his inconsistency with line that's causing him not to be able to be more penetrative. We know he had the pace. We know he had the skill, but it's his first match uh, in this uh, round of, of matches, and it hopefully he will get better as the tournament goes along. But really good to see cricket back at Salem Park. Oh. 38 for one at the end of nine. Oh, it is, it is a good feeling. It's the guys want to get out. The guys want to work on their game, improve their game. So it's, it's nice to see cricket back, despite the COVID and all the different protocols. It's good to see cricket. And right, I want to just reach out to all the folks who are listening and who knows people and knows people and can move people to make action happen that you can help sponsor some of uh, what we're doing with Monster Cricket by contacting any one member of the Monster Cricket Association or send an email to mrcricket at gmail.com or you know just contact any one of the executive members of the cricket association and just let us know what you were willing to contribute and it could be in any form and we will really be appreciative because as you know resources are always welcomed right and i'll give you some telephone contacts if you want to reach out to us but i gave you the email address that you can email us we'll give you uh some phone numbers my phone number for sure you can add uh 1664 492 2770 and you can whatsapp me uh, or, or send me uh, a message uh, or a call uh, mr Queeley, of course 496 8776 you can whatsapp him or email him as well i don't know if he has instagram and and, and um, all these things, Instagram. And of course, we are on Facebook. I will tell you about our Facebook contact as well. Uh, Vanessa will tell me about that if we have a Facebook account as yet. Here's a wide delivery down the onside. It runs pretty close. A good stop down there by youngster Fenton, who had a little bubble one time, but now it's wide and an extra. So wide plus one or two wides, if you want to be correct or politically correct. 40 for one. Uh, and uh, we're in the course of over 10. Livan with his first delivery in his spell, or his first spell, and would need to just pick his line and length. I think what these bowlers error, make an error with is try to bowl too fast, too quick. Here is he up the wicket now to bowl to Grant. Grant not Grant, Grant, yes, but he's walking down. Walking down to a bowler with a brand new cherry. I think that's a bit disrespectful. And if I was the fast bowler, I would have something to say about that. And the next delivery we will tell you exactly how I feel. It would hit, the, we'd be in the mud. I would go in the mud, really. So let's see if live one is paying attention. You can't be walking down to a fast bowler with a brand new cherry. Here but I was thinking he hammered it into the deck really a way would hammer but that was good intent I like the attitude come down to this one <laughs> this reminds me of the good old days with my schoolmate Kenroy Hyman or the big and Burley. Luther Kelly the big burly yes <laughs> I have a joke to give you about Kenroy Hyman down at Search Park versus St. Kitts and Ricky Basso or Flight Basso. Fly, I don't know which one it is. Ricky, 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 Ricky. Basso. And the first ball, he said that it was the second ball because the guy was dropped the first ball. But I know because I was commentary. Here comes Hyman away from the pavilion end. Runs into ball to Ricky Basso and that's hit flat, high, hard, straight, way over the bowler's head for second. First ball in a 
brand new cherry. Hymer wasn't happy. He was not happy. I've never seen a fastball be hit so hard, so flat for six. And that I think he might have done some damage. We have lost our screen, one of our screens, uh, to our left is out. So we'll get it back in a bit. Our statistics page have just slightly disappeared. Maybe just pulled out the cable or uh, something. Yeah, some minor adjustments. Here is in live and missing his run. He's not having the best of days in the, or the best of starts. So what? Yes, we're back now. So he's 42 for one, and I think he's only ball one ball so far in this over. Well, which was the ball that he, uh, Mr. Grant, stepped down to him. So he's now 42 for one. Zawandi White is on strike, and Zawandi might not be well advised to do that. As Aiden Lyman runs it, bowls to White. White is getting a ball that's... Well, he might have been listening to my Ricky Basso comment. Here is he slapping Aiden Lyman back over his head for four. Ben Greenaway ducked. I didn't think that he was going to hit him, but he had to duck. He ducked the upper head, ducked, and he was hit straight back over his head for four. One bounce, four. He moves to um, eight, does the one, the White. And the score, 46 for one in over number 10. Trevor, the shot. I think that was line and length. That was just disrespect to a fast bowler. Here is live and up to the ball to Grant. That is, oh, there's a loud shot, but there was a thick inside edge. But he, not Grant, but was a one the white was looking to play a similar shot to the one before. That one again was on line and length. He got a little bit of nip on it, and but he's bowling a little straighter and he's forcing the batsman to play, albeit they've been aggressive. Adjustments, adjustments, Gregory. And that's what you want to see from your young players and thinking too. And he's thinking, here is he. Not afraid. And these batsmen are not afraid as well. Zawandi White on 8. 46, chasing 123. Here is live and away from us at the commentary box. In. Goes in. A good delivery. No ball. Signal by umpire uh, Sylvester Ben Greenaway. And that was a good delivery. Nippy. So this youngster have some pace. He have, he have a good rhythm. But again, maybe trying a bit too hard. Not getting his run up right. And you could see his frustration. A free hit. Now signaled by umpire Ben Greenway. 47 for one. Chasing 123 for victory. And uh, now that this is going to tell. This is going to tell on the, on the MNI2 who won the toss and batted first and really did not do justice to that decision. Made only 123. Uh, Yearwood got 43 and McPherson made 27. Zawandi White was the, the chief bowler. destroyer. Yes. Picked up five for 26. Of his eight and Dino Baker three for twenty seven, three for twenty seven, of his eight. It's live and it has to get it right. A free hit is in session here. Comes up now to bowl to Zawandi White misses his run. He needs to remark that run. He needs to get that run up right. Damien Williams who's at mid on has to have a discussion. Why? Well, Warren Smith says remark your run. Well, Warren Smith is a very wily little captain who's now shaking his head. You know I don't realize how short these guys are. I didn't realize that Warrell and Trevor were that short. When I look, when I, I, I didn't when realize I look, that. When I look at Smith, Smith it brings back memories of Fry. Right. He used to watch cricket in those days. Yes, yes, yes. The only thing he's missing is that long, bushy afro. Okay, you don't think he has the afro? I think he's well, flat. Everybody's <laughs> into the twist and the locks and all of that stuff. <laughs> Hey, well, we are, we're having a lot of fun here. 47 for one. We're just happy to have cricket. Here is Aiden Livan up to the wicket to bowl two. And that one is swinging at it. A better delivery outside off them. Yes. And he got that one right. He's, he's given away nine runs so far off this over and a bit of um, extra, five extras, I think, in this over. Uh, he's conceded so far. So, four? Well, four. Four extras and definitely need to get it right but he's his first over and surely maybe his ball four four deliveries here is he now taking a shorter run runs up to the wicket to bowl to grant not grant but uh zawandi white who gets a good delivery just an amount of stump and that's the top of off stump that delivery was on and he played it out into the offside you, you see that loose man that's what he's adjusting that's what he should have been doing in, in the first place in, instead of trying to bowl too fast just pick your line Adjusting. Well, what I'm saying, I don't think he warmed up properly. That's what something is is, is not right here. Here's he up to the wicket, and that's a no ball again. But the, again, he's true, he's true. he went for extra pace. You could see he went for extra pace, and he's now once again gone over, committed that cardinal sin of overstepping. 
three no balls already in that over. Is it three no balls? Yes, three no balls. So he's gotten three no balls and two whites. Yes, three no balls, another free hit. So really and truly, he has to get it right. He has to get it right. He's given away 10 runs and he has one delivery left. So Damien is having a word with him. It's, it's not a big total, so they'll have to get it right. They got Mac first Mead. They will need to find some other spinner. I'm looking around to see who is the other spinner out there. I think we still need another spinner. Here is he, up to the wicket. And he's hit high, high, hard and handsome by Zawandi White, the captain for six. So Zawandi White, who needs the batting practice, is really looking dominant. He has the ability. He has the skill. He's one of the players that has gone as far as the West Indies under, under 15 and, at, and has been in the West, in on, West Indies under 19 setup. And surely, I think he's even captain delivered under, 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 under 19. So definitely, he's got some talent. And maybe, I, you know, I worry about this captaincy thing. And if you have a talented player, it doesn't mean that you should make him the captain. I think that these guys that have this superior talent should be left alone to, to perform and put the captaincy in the hands of someone who understands the game, and maybe you probably might be the one most trusted, but I'm still saying it could have an impact on, on the performance, and that then comes into judgment with the selectors because they're looking at your statistics. Well, right, and that's uh, the voice of uh, Mr. Quilly, who is a part of the cricket executive. And really, and truly, that is why he's been bestowed, uh, the decision has been made to give him the captaincy so he can start practicing the habit of captaining and performing with both bat and ball. And we've seen him perform in the field as the captain of the, of the, of the MNI 1 and also now with the bat. He bowled well, took five wickets, and he's now batting. He's on 19, he's on 19 no, he's on 14. And he's only faced 16 deliveries. So he will need to steady and watch bat his team to the end. Uh, uh, so far, he, he, he's contesting and, and looking out, way out in front for the man of the match and the game changer of this uh, uh, first match in the fifth month of cricket 50 over tournament. So really and truly, Mr. Quilly, you're right. I mean, maybe we could get a few more uh, remarks from you as, an ex as the ball is out. So you can tell us a bit more. Well, you know, uh, Greg, yes. Last um, Lewis under 19 um, tournament that we had, where Lee was, was uh, playing um, in the West Indies setup, um, you had four players from much that was part of that whole um, grouping. You had um, Zoran the White, you had um, um, General KB, you had Joshua Grant, and you had um, the guy Rodney being in, in, the, in the reserves. And so I think that those four players in particular, we're looking to see how they perform now and to see them, you know, they, they transition into this um, one shot um, team and going further into the Leewards um, set up and we want to see other young players that people like folks like Avon Live and, and Yearwood and so come through. Um, we have seen um, people like um, Williams been around for for some time. You have seen um Jess Peters been, been, been around for some time and Dino Baker. Baker Baker but we want to see those young guys transition and show the skills that they have displayed at the Leewards and at the West Indies set up now at the monster level. And right, you have a fair bit of youngsters who are in the setup as well. We have, we have Jamal Williams, we have um, young ne Nehemiah uh, Young, you have uh, Harrison, Travis Harrison, and Jamari Lane as well, who are players that are coming through the ranks and really looking like they, they're adapting to take over the, the whole setup of the monster senior team. And indeed, indeed. And, and that is what they, you, you, you would have said earlier. We are looking as, a, as an association for bodies to be invested so that we could invest in those players and that we could get cricket, um, you know, rising here in Montserrat and we could get at least three or four players back on the Leewards team on, on, in a full-time basis and one at least one or two transitioning to the West Indies level. And, and there's so many opportunities that will be open to these guys, especially with the fact that, again, we say live islands. Thank you, because now we are streaming. A lot of uh, scouts would be able to see the talent that we have and probably reach out to get some of these guys into those uh, other like franchise teams and other contracts. Good.
Excellent, excellent. And um, you know, the, the live streaming you know enables the, the folks in the in the in the UK and so forth to actually have a look at these players and for them to be able to get uh, you know these contracts and play overseas and so forth. And really and truly, really, we, we, we at an executive level will be continue to look at exposing our players, getting them as far as possible with their careers, and we just hope that they can come out and put the work in. Definitely, def def definitely. Right, so we have the ball back with us, and that was a big thing. You know, sometimes, you know, they, you know, sometimes they say the devil, the devil is out, the devil is out, I don't know. Sometimes they, he comes from all angles. You see, my, my good Cardell just came in and disturbed my whole, and here's a delivery that's tucked into the offside. Warrell Smith, a little bit of a, a camaraderie there, you know, friendly stuff going on between him and Joshua. And Joshua gets a single, he moves to 20, and now Zawande White comes in to strike. Uh, Warrell Smith has picked up the attack from the far end. Uh, Damien Williams, five overs, 28 runs, no wicket. Wasn't his real best today. Mark Persmead, four overs, two maidens, 10 runs, the one wicket to have fallen. And Aiden Liven, one over, 16 runs. Warrell Smith has just started his first over. Here is he, up to the wicket, to bowl to um, Zawandi White, who drives hard. Uh, Kajwan Sullivan couldn't stop, because that was it really hard. And had an awkward bounce. And it goes into the offside. Another player that we have to watch, and players you have to watch in this setup, is, is Kajwan Sullivan, who has all of a sudden decided to take his cricket very seriously. And is one that you probably wouldn't have uh, accused of, of being in the, in, the, in the forefront. But this guy has really worked hard at his game, and is looking good. Here is a delivery. He's pulled into the offside, not in full control. A bad delivery, short. Pull into the on side and he's gonna get two as John Pollard picks it up and again Trevor we look at Pollard. By the way, you were listening to the voice of the treasurer of the Munster Cricket Association, Mr. Peter Creeley, who is also the chief uh, manager, the chief director or manager of the SPCCU and really a man in finance, a man that has a voice in politics, and he's really come on board to be a part of Cricket in Muncha. Here is the Warren Smith who's flicked into the onside. Uh, Joshua Gwan does not look in full control of those those undrives. He looks a bit awkward, in, if you want to call it that. Warren Smith seems to have gotten a hit and is stretching his toe. I don't know what happened there. Something again happened there. But definitely, Joshua, I, 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 I look at, at, at Craig Brathwaite when he's batting, and I really don't like how he holds the bat. Somebody needs to talk to Craig Bradwaite about how do you hold a cricket bat. Because he is always going to be suspect to getting out, out on that ball just on about half stump. He does not look comfortable at all with how he's holding the bat. Even to the spinner, he came down to the spinner in the last match and the bat face was closed. And, and, and he couldn't hit the ball. Or adjustment. Even with, with tennis players, you look at they have they have coaching. Here is Warren Smith. After we get the ball to Josh, not Joshua, but Zawandi White. White. A little while ago, and the Kajwan. skills of Kajwan Sullivan. There are a few other guys who are multi skilled, multi talented. You yes, yes. Kristen. Yearwood. Yearwood. You look at General Payne. Mm -hmm. These are guys who are, as long as you put them in, any sport in capital, <laughs> they excel. That's to the onside. A bit eerie. If there was a backward square instead of a forward square, might have held out to it. But nevertheless, he picked the gap and played it in the gap for two. So he moves to 17, Zawandi White captain. 62 for one. We're in the course of over number 11. And really and truly, they're, they're scoring at a nip. Above five and a half, five point seven two. Here is uh, Warren Smith up to the wicket to bowl to Grant. Grant is flicking again, not in full, white, not in full control. Uh, Yorkland delivery and getting a single. He moves to eighteen, and uh, I think you, uh, the point you're making uh, that brings up the end of over number eleven, sixty-three for one. So uh, the point you're making really is such a a, a top point that I'm looking at Zawande White and I'm still thinking that he has to do some work with his footwork. He has to do really put some work in with his footwork. I, I don't think he, his movement, his trigger movement is, is, uh, uh, is, is right or, or, or in absolute. 
meaning he doesn't have it full control over that yet. He's still playing away from his body and not moving as mu as good as I would see for balance. They, they, they're still at this stage that there are adjustments to be made. They're in that growing stage per se. Coaches can work with them. They can make that adjustment and improve on those weaknesses. So we're, you're at a good point as cricket is concerned. You're seeing budding talent. They may have gone through the under 15, under 7. They're still in that development stage where adjustments could be made. Well, and also you're looking at the fact that you have guys like Chernell Burns and Jason Peters who are still there around Dalston. Monster cricketers, I don't know what's happening. I, I think, well, well, sometimes things happen like that. You know, you, your, your finger hits the wrong button and it, it goes off. So I'm here talking, picking up people like Tyrone uh, Herbert, my friend Texi, Trevor Semper, Lesroy Weeks, Lesroy Irish, Aurel Kernan, a number of guys, General Naza, Owen Roach, all these guys. As I say um, goodbye to Mr. Quilly, who was, Quilly, you should collect some things for me or you're coming back. Yeah, he's coming back, right. So I just wanted to say that because he's here. He's the exit, you know, when the treasurer moves or when you need things done, you have to hold the treasurer close. I mean, and somebody it, might just bring one, a bill. One thing I could say from your program on Thursdays, these guys have committed to giving their support to development in cricket in Montreal. Just want to inform the listeners that they're not missing any cricket because we're at the water break and we're going straight through with our comments and commentary and just talking to where we are in terms of um, what's happening. So, yes, Trevor, you're right. Go hurry and read your point. Yes, those, those guys have openly made their commitment to being available for whether it's coaching or if they're guys on that end of the spectrum in England, UK, wherever, that they will contribute. And that's, that's a good thing to know that these guys have left Montserrat, are in the diaspora, but have still committed to, you know, giving their support and their efforts towards development of, you know, cricket in Montreal. 63 for one. MNI one there, chasing 123 for victory made by MNI two. And just to give you a summary, MNI two batted first, won the toss. They made 122 all out with uh, Christian Yearwood making 43 and Mark First Mead 27. Then you had a situation, 26, and you had a situation where Zawande White came on the ball with his partner, spin partner, Dino Baker, and he picked up five for 26, and Dino Baker, eight for, t uh, three for 25. I'm looking at everything here. And both uh, completed their eight over spell. So really ripping through the, 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 the top and middle order of the, um, the MNI 2s batting, and now set themselves uh, uh, easy target for victory, which is 123. They're 63 for one off, 11 overs, with skipper uh, Zawande White on 18, and Joshua Grant, your opening batsman, on 23. We'll get back to, to, to that as we see the umpires coming back out for the after the water break. But really and truly, it's good to have cricket played in the Leeward Islands, and it's been played in Nevis. They're having their tournaments, the 2020, the 1010. They, 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 they haven't reached their one-day tournament as yet, but they're hoping to do that as well. I know St. Martin is working through their, their, their logistics. We know that Anguilla has played some cricket. I think it's a 1010. We Antigua has gone through their 40 over. Uh, they've done a 2020 tournament as well. So we, we, we are looking for cricket. St. Kitts as well has played some cricket over there. And we, we are really happy to have cricket played locally. But we want to step it up now to getting more regional. The, 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 the professional team there in St. Kitts, Quinton Boatswain, who's down there with that team. And those guys are still in training. We're hoping to get a few more guys in there from, you know, even around the region just to help with that training so we keep building the brand keep developing and, and, and creating a farm system for the West Indies team that has turned the corner somewhat I'm truly glad that we have cricket regionally because for us not having the numbers 
from the Leeward Islands in the West Indies set up is a negative from my perspective. So we have to get cricket going as long as we get cricket go going in our area. That increases our chances. Absolutely. So and it's a good thing. You know, there's a myth that once you have Leeward Islands presence uh, and, and, and a major presence, we are, we are the X factor for West Indies that creates that winning attitude. We can say all we want, but we, we, I think it has been proven. So that's the myth, and a myth sometimes is not really proven or is not really fact, but it looks that way. And it looks like when we have a number of small island players in the um, West Indies setup, we, we, we become dominant again. But like what West Indies is playing, the second test starts tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning. So at the uh, so we which is cricket stadium and we're hoping that we have a very favorable outcome from our players i don't know what the selectors are going to do tomorrow but definitely we, we we're happy for west Indies team we're at montserrat we're in salem and we're looking at mni1 chasing 123 for victory against mni2 and it's going to be leon williams to pick up the attack from this the uh commentary box end with aiden live and uh, out of the attack. Here's Leon Williams after the wicket with his first delivery hit. Hi there. Oh, Joshua Grant could have been caught there had that player been a little further back. At, at, at He was in a short third man position. He went over. He said, that's Pollard again. A short guy. But not a good shot. It was the first delivery of a new spell from uh, Leon Williams and he went after a wide delivery. Yes. And even just a taller player in that position that would would have created uh, maybe a catastrophe for the batting team of Grant himself. He moves to 20. Well, that's that four was Grant. I, I, I think he was put to white. Is he on Grant is on 27, isn't he? Oh, that's correct. Well, Grant is on 23, and here is um. Williams up to the wicket to bow to Grant. Grant is getting a full pitch delivery, flicking it in the air, and there could be. Oh my goodness. Is that live and again? Yes. It looks like live and he went on the first bounce and then he tripped on throwing that ball. It was a risky single and they completed it successfully in the end. I've lost my um I've lost my screen again over here. Oh we've got current back. Thanks to the guys at Mull. We wanna pick you up, guys. You've worked hard, you've toiled hard. I, I did disconnect some of my electro, electro, electrical equipment over at home because I didn't want to be over here and come, come back on any damage to my equipment. So I did disconnect a few things. Here is Williams up to the wicket, the ball two, and a well-driven delivery down to live and again. And I think something fell off. Is that black thing? Is it shades? Something fell off over there. Oh, he picked it up. Right. So something fell off. I don't know. These guys play with shades. In playing cricket, I don't know what's going on, but you never know. They they think that is style. Here is Williams up to the wicket to bowl to Zawandi White. Zawandi White is getting a delivery that stood up on him somewhat, and he had to check the shot, played it into the offside for a single, and it's now 68 for one. Zawandi White on 23, and uh, both batsmen, batsmen on 23, and really and truly, Trevor, uh, an easy target to chase. They're halfway there. Easy target. No rush, no hurry. Yeah, here's Williams up to the wicket to bowl to Grant. A full delivery and he struck in the midriff. A bad shot to a full toss. I don't know where he got hit, but that was not a good shot. They got up, they watched that. He was struck in the uncomfortable area of whether it's the midriff or just a little law in that gray area. You don't want to get hit in the. Oh, he's up. He's up. Oh, wait, wait, that's, a, that's a lot of uh, shenanigans or semantics going on out there. He, he had me fooled. He looked like he was hit in that uncomfortable area. Uh, Gregory, I have to, at this point, take some time out. Give credit to the ground staff or ground crew for getting this wicket and this park together for this day. Right, right, right. Because well, not having cricket for this long of a period and getting this wicket together, it's you know, I must give a, a thumbs up to the ground staff, Jason Peters and his crew, and Matthew his crew. Morgan and, you know, the crew. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone who's come on board, I, I can't call names because I get into trouble as the president, even start calling names. Here's Williams up to Grant. Grant, that one didn't lift at all. That was what you call a router. 
uh, my my uncle wants some flying dove yo, <laughs> from over the bridge. Uh, the router styly. That that yes. delivery was the router styly. End of over number twelve but underscore wait, wait, sixty eight four one. Go ahead. I'm 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 impressed by the keeper that we have there for the feeling team. Very sharp. And you wouldn't believe that Fry hasn't keep for a while. Oh. He's he's been in the outfield. He's been bowling. He's put on a bit of weight. I think I, I'm going to be really here when they're going to do the BP test because I want to know the scores for the BP with some of these guys because we got to do the BP because we have to all, when they go to the next level, it's going to be done and the next level is going to be done. The BP is important. Your, your fitness levels are key. And that's, that's something that Kisho Shalo, the uh, incumbent um, vice president of the CWI, by the way, the West Indies. Wait, wait, I, I, I'm going to go on their side for a minute. COVID has done a number on, on, on all of, of us, guys. all of us, but, that's off, all of us. But when you have a goal or you have, you know, something in mind, you shoot that, you have to keep everything in check. You have to keep your fitness in check. If you have your plans of getting to the Leeward Islands team or to that level, you have to keep your fitness in check and all of those things. Horace Smith comes in balls to, uh, and the oh my goodness. Well, 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 well. It was struck straight. Damien Williams got a boot out. He went to the man at mid-off. Grant was running down, not realizing that Zawandi was moving. And really, well, well advised. I think he was well advised to go back as well. Somebody could have been run out. But he got back safely and really an ill-advised run. That, for that, sure, that would have for been. sure. 68 for one. We are uh, in the Munshot Cricket Association organized tournament, the 50 over version of it. Tomorrow we, we, we start our 2020 tournament. We're running both tournaments concurrent, and each weekend will be a Saturday and a Sunday. Here is Wild Smith up to the wicket. The ball to ah, Zawandi White who stays it nicely, but I thought that was a risky shot. It was a bit too close to unstump. And he played it well in the end, but I would not advise that shot. I saw Joshua Grant try it as well. He got one for four and one miss. And now Zawandi White is doing the same. He got a single for that one, but not advice. Not advice. And there's no need to rush or hurry at this point. Score is always, you know, it's in a comfortable position with the rate going. I think, you know, overs are good. Captain Smith comes in, balls to Grant. Grant is steering it back with a point. He's going to get a run. Williams is running around, but... Livan comes off the third man boundary and fields and one more to the total. Both batsmen running concurrent as well. 24-24, 70 for one. They need another, what is it, 57 runs? 53 runs for victory. So really on target, uh, but we realize that, uh, they're on target. They have lots of overs. Here is Warren Smith. After we get the ball to, and he's hitting it back on a point just over Leon Williams' head. And again, that shot. Really risky, and again, over the man at backward points head. And Warren Smith, he, he might be advised to set two points one a little back and one a little forward. And maybe he might get some reward because these batsmen are not stopping going after a shot. He moves to 28, does Captain White. Captain White, who steered his team in the bowling um, category, he picked up five. For 26. Here is he now batting on 28. Comes in as well. Smith the ball to him and he's sticking it into the onside. The man at uh, midwicket who's uh, uh, Kajwan Solomon Fields. And there is no run. A 74 for one. We're in the course of number 13. Remember, we're playing a, a reduced over version of this uh, one day tournament uh, because of the electricity issues. But we're back. Here is Wild Smith into one. He's swinging to the heavens, to the skies, missing. And really, I don't know. He probably wants to finish the game. He wants to finish the game in one shot. I don't think that's possible. Can you get 50 off one shot? I don't think so. 49 uh, they need <laughs> at the end of over number 13. The thought of going over long off was there. Foot placement not in time. Well, I've mentioned that before. Carry on. <laughs> For pitching outside that off stone. And the good thing about what we've done this year, uh, umpire Lane is the coach of Sawandi's team, and Sylvester Ben Greenaway is the coach of the fielding team. So what I expect them to do is to observe while in match to when they go into nets to, to sort out what's going on. 
here is Williams up to the wicket to bowl that beautiful delivery, lovely delivery. Deceived him in in, in, in speed as well. He, he wasn't fast. He's a he's a medium pace bowler, but that one was somewhat slower. I don't know if he's a natural delivery. I think that was really a, a deceptive delivery. Right, and that's the thing. He's not trying to get too much speed, but getting light line and length and working the back. Here is he up to the wicket to bowl, and he slapped it to the offside. He's gonna get some runs. They've gonna go for one. They're they're coming back for two. No, they don't take that chance with Warrell Smith. You don't ever chance to with Warrell Smith. He's the, one of the best fielders, a Johnny Road style fielder, and the score moves on by one. Does um. Uh, is that uh, Grant? He moves to 25. Uh, his partner, captain, on 28 comes into strike. 75 for one. And uh, these two guys are two of the senior in terms of the, the Montserrat setup. It's a young team, it's a young outfit, and these are the, uh, two of the most prominent players in that lineup. Here is uh, Williams up to the wicket to bowl to uh, uh, White, who strokes it elegantly up on the offside not trying to play too forcefully just stroked it massaged it if you want to say up or too long off for a single he moves to 29 and the score now 76 for one 50 partnership we'll get to that in a bit here is he up to the wicket to bowl to grant and he's popping on him so this guy has something he has something this young williams and he's exploring the the, the, the deficiencies, if you may call it that, in the pitch. And that one jumped from a shot of a good length and popped on Grant, and he popped it out into the offside where there was no fielder. Luckily, 76 for one. Leon Williams is causing a little bit of disturbance here. Comes up to bow to Grant. Bowls to Grant. Grant is getting a full pitch delivery. Driven up, and Warren Smith comes around, and they, they do scamper a single to his left, and that, that's always to his weaker side. So they got one. That's, that's, that's the singles, nothing out of the ordinary, no rash shots. They're in a good good position. To well, they're in a commanding position. A 50 partnership came up, and I'll give you the statistics and data for that. Here is he comes up, bowls, and he's dropping down. What a good delivery. And he had to check it. He got it down to our fine leg in the end, but that was a super delivery, because he went as a Yorker in the end, and uh, White played it well to really get that on that and get it out of his thumbs. He moves to 30 and the score 78 for one at the end of over number 14. Williams is for sure working those batsmen, cutting down on the boundaries, good pitching, good line, good length, but no pressure for the batsmen. As long as they pick those singles up, they'll be fine. And want to pick up our scores, uh, Miss Yearwood and Miss, um, um, Miss, um, Weeks. Is Mark, Mark and Fenton. The miss, the miss Mark and Fenton and, and Yearwood. And, and Yearwood as well, you know, the super, soup. I call it soup. You know, super come. You ever see um, Obey Wedding? Soup. What soup you tell me about? Super come. You know, soup. Cardella, I tell you, if you hear me. If you only hear me, Trevor. Here is um, a full pitch driven for six. Very well played by Zawande White. I got a gift, and he said he was wrapped in all sort of uh, wrappings. And he said, "Thank you very much, Warrell. I could not have deserved better." Christmas in March. In March. <laughs> Saint Patrick. Saint Patrick. Uh, by the way, Trevor, the, uh, six more, so 84 for one. And Trevor, uh, a low-key Saint Patrick's, uh, uh, as everyone would have anticipated, for, because for of me, for me, Gregory, safety first. I was locked down for 14 days. I didn't mind. Right, well, when protecting when myself and the great, the general public. Talk for yourself, but I talk for yourself. What I'm saying, is Saint Patrick's, is Saint Patrick's. I want to celebrate Saint Patrick. I, don't I want to celebrate too. Put great. all the guidelines and all the protocols. If I want to celebrate Saint Patrick. Question for you, Gregory. What did it feel like to be locked down for three weeks? Not good. No, okay. I've never no, any kind of lockdown. Me, me, I'm telling that's, you, that's I don't know how some people, first. how some people enjoy, seem to enjoy lockdown. No lockdown. I, I did my 14 days. That was like prison time. Yeah, but you were also here for the um for the lockdown as well. But that, that that's more than 40 days, Trevor. No, I'm saying the <laughs> initial protocol once you come in is 14 yeah. days. So you did that too. I did 14 days and then three weeks. Oh so my like, goodness! It was oh a my. Center. Yeah, yeah. Well, just enjoy it, cause then you know, just in case. <laughs> I'm saying, you know. But anyways, I'm telling you, man. It's like uh, we're into this new normal and this new way of life. It looks like I never thought the whole world would ever shut down. 
and I have seen that the whole world shut down at one point. Now we are in this thing where we are. We, the, uh, Jamaica. There was a lady on the program this morning that said Jamaica is going to a curfew from midday on Wednesday or oh, midday today until Monday. I don't know what's going on. So we don't want that, right? All so sorts of things. With the protocols and try to be on the safe side. So Trevor, I got my vaccine, and uh, there's a lot of talk or a lot of mush, mush, or whoosh, whoosh, or shush, shush about the vaccine. The point is, if you have to take the vaccine, take the vaccine. Gregory. If you don't want to take it. Gregory, to be honest, I'm not going to go there. It's up to you. If you don't want to take it, you don't take it. I'm just saying, if the vaccine is available, I am someone who has to move around. I tell already, I have to move around. For the, for the level of business that I'm in, I have to move. I have to meet people. I have to go on and do sales. And I have to do marketing. And I have to meet um, look at opportunities. I can't be sitting here. Yes, it's a virtual world now, and I can probably do pitches online, but people like to see physical presence, and I have a little bit of charismatic way about me, so I want to be moving around. Oh, my goodness. Warren Smith have bowled a Jaffa, an absolute Jaffa that went through Zawandi White's defense and straight to the boundary because he the went keeper. to the keeper's defense as well. What a delivery, a Jaffa. You know, those ones that, that you use unplayable. Went through him. Right, we're doing the mic. Right. Okay, we're doing a little bit of technical stuff again, Trevor. Always my, my good technician, Adrian Edgecombe. And everybody has to know Adrian Edgecombe. Because he's now a premier figure on Ireland. He's live island events. He streams everything. If you're having a pasture event where animals are being tied, fed, and grass is cut in, Adrian Edgecombe provides live feed up in the mountains. If you're doing a hike, Adrian Edgecombe provides live islands. Of course, you know, the animals and the pasture is not our preferred event. But it doesn't know, matter if it's something that you want to have, um, live yes. islands, and you provide live islands for it. Yes, if it's live. <laughs> it was, you know, that's what I meant, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so here is my speed. After that, Jaff of a delivery, another yorker led delivery, played into the offside by Zoan the White. And I don't know what happened with that delivery. Someone who has crept, has crept up on our radar to 40. He's on 40 of, I'll tell you in a bit, 34 deliveries. Wow. Here is uh, Warren Smith up to the wicket to bowl to White. White is driving in here. And she's out. What a catch. Trevor Guess who? Guess who? Oh, my goodness. And he does, he does the hoop. He does the hoop. He, the hoop. The hoop. Oh my goodness, Stefan <laughs> Ball on! <laughs> well, 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 well. I must hey, apologize for my excitement. Gregory, I'm wondering now if we're going to get a soaker in Christmas on this issue. I think so. I think it, there's going to be my cricket debut, my senior cricket debut. What happened? I got LBW, I took a catch, I got rid of that. I, oh my, soaker. So, oh well. And here comes his. His partner, the man that got him out, is coming in. Dino Baker is coming in. And can there be a possible twist in events at Salem Park where it seemed for all what it's worth that MNI 1 was cruising home and they've just lost their captain and now Dino Baker has come out. So Zawandi White, after I mentioned him getting to 40 on our radar, the very next delivery, commentator's curse, he was caught by a, a brilliant catch or unexpected catch from an unexpected fielder. Really, 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 I don't know. I don't know how many more unexpected things can happen here today. I've seen three majestical catches. I mean, super or oh, top super. Trevor, I'm trying to get my um, my, my words, uh, my, my, to get a little higher in my in my description Your of vocabulary, this. Yeah. it. Yes, yes. God help me out every time, you know. You know, when you're in the moment, you have to think quick. And sometimes you don't get the right thing come out. But that was th these catches. You, you saw one from Young Lane, one from uh, uh, Benjamin, and now one from Trevor. Here is uh, Warren Smith, who's picked up his first week to come into ball to Dino Baker. Foolish delivery, driven up on the offside. Gonna get some runs. Oh, and that was always gonna happen. That bad bounce and is gonna run pretty close. He dives, he stopped it, and can he come back in? They run. They're looking for no. Well, surely Dino Baker is not looking for another. He uh, well. Dina Baker has run two, and after all that happened with that delivery down there, or the feeling, and to only get two, that speaks to the BP test. But that's all I'm going to say. 90 for two. Taking and it back a bit to live violence, I have to give thumbs up to Adrian, who has kept me for certain up to date on happenings in Munster when it comes to sports. But and when I'm in Boston, 
Boston, that's where I am. I, as long as there's anything regarding sports, I'm on my own. And Basil spoke I to you. Basil talk, spoke to you about the, 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 the funerals and so on, the funerals, church, weddings. Um, this guy does everything. Yeah. Everything. Sp- everything. My mother used to always tell me, give the flowers to the individuals who deserve it before they go. And I'm, well, I'm not going to stop praising him because he helps out the Cricket Association. Here is he. That good delivery. You're calling by Leon Williams. And Leon Williams and Warren Smith are not really the suspects that you would expect that would come in and change the game. But these two guys... A bowling in town. Now, Warren Smith is a bit more expensive. He's gone for 27, but he's picked up the key wicket of Zawandi White. And could that be the game-changing moment? Williams, up to the wicket, the ball to Grant. Comes up, balls to Grant, and a good delivery. And this is what I'm looking at with Williams. He's always this little deceptive uh, medium pacer who just puts the ball on a spot. An annoying length that he bowls and line. Annoying, and I say annoying because it's not for the drive, it's not for a pull. Uh, you just gotta check your shots. Here is he up to the wicket. Maybe I'm you know, commentators, but it comes up good delivery, foolish, and well taken. Oh, what a take! And wow, well, he got away with a bit of a wipe, but it was a Yorker length delivery, and I think that's why he got away because the batsman he just barely missed the leg stump. So, a good delivery from Williams, who's bowling really within himself and bowling line and length, pitching it up. Holding it back, Yorkers here, slow deliveries. This is good bowling from a young Smart medium pacer. Bowling. Bowling. Here is Williams up to the wicket to bowl to Grant Grant and that annoying length again. And we see young Naim Naya Young, who's another good prospect. I really like this guy. I've seen him in the softball tournament that we held in December, and he really has got a good head. He captained the the underdogs. Was he in that under fifteen, under seventeen tournament? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, he was. Here is uh, Williams up to the wicket to bowl. And I York length again. So he's mixing it up. Shot up a good length. York length. And Grant, who's been there for some time, he's faced 45 deliveries and really still getting some trouble from Leon Williams, who's bowled. He's not considered a run in these overs yet. So he's... Well, let me not say that. Every time I try to say something good, I don't want it to be dog mode that something happens. But let's see. Here is he. Up to the wicket to see if he can finish well. Comes a balls to Grant. Grant is hitting him. Oh, my. Hitting him, hitting him, hitting him. Hitting him. He's well hit, too. He's well hit. Way over. Long on. And there you go, uh, Trevor. Uh, the commentators. Curse. 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 I, I was trying not to do that. I was trying not to dog mouth him. But so be it. I mean, I can't bowl for him. And I am not the batsman that's hitting the ball. But he carried it just up, short, good, full, over pitch. And that was dealt a good blow. Grant moves to 32. And MNI1 moves a bit closer to their target of 123, 96 for 2. Batting well is Grant, leading from the front. I guess he is looking for bragging rights with his um, co worker, Buddy Christian. He <laughs> And he's batting also with a co-worker, which is um, Dino Baker. Yeah. So, so a number of these youngsters that, as well has been given opportunity to work in the field of sports. And I'm liking that. And that's somewhat the, the apprenticeship program that I, I started, which I followed too with what German Way did with the hype. When I came with the, with the, with the um, pr- private sector employee assistance program, it was to get targeted um, individuals into career paths which they like and to give them the incentive to, to work towards a professional outcome. And a, a number of the guys have, have maintained the jobs that they would have gotten from that. And these guys are in that field and you hope that they can continue in that vein and, and continue with their, their individual sports love development. Here is Smith to continue now to bowl to Dino Baker. Bowls and he's wrapped on the pad. Oh, he just got a bat on it. I thought for one moment that Warren got through his defense but he got down on it and played it up on the offside for no run. The score, 96 for 2. The overs are not relevant, although this is the 15th over. And uh, clearly, they're on target to finish this somewhere around the 25th over if they continue in this vein. Here is Warren Smith up to the wicket to bowl to Baker. Baker is getting a full pitch delivery, driven down to Long On. Or not, mid-on. 
really, because uh, uh, he's up in the circle, and there is no one. That's Pollard who feels well. So Pollard has been working on his game as well. He looks good in the field. He and Kajon Sullivan are buddies, and I tell you, a number of friends here in this thing. Here is uh, a delivery stroke up in the offside, and I'm liking that the players are keeping a camaraderie and a friendship because he helps with the cricket development and their commitment. So one will urge the other. I heard, I had a conversation with. Um, uh, Cashman Sullivan, he was very disappointed in the way he got out. And he said he's working. He said what he was planning to do. Here's how we deliver. Stay down to five, uh, third man, where he's fielded by Livan. And one more to Dino Baker. He moves to three. The score 97 for two. Trevor, uh, Cashman Sullivan was speaking to the fact that, you know what? He said, listen, my, my thing was after I saw uh, Ed Kumar Bonner's innings, I am, I've decided that I'm going to adapt an attitude of playing long innings and staying out there in the wicket and he said it was so disappointing because the ball, the ball had a toe end uh, as we see a delivery slapped into the offside he's gonna get some runs it's to the right of uh, leon williams and down to mark first mead on the cover point boundary he gets another run does um joshua he moves to 33 98 for two they're chasing 123 for victory but that's the attitude you want from from your players in terms of their development so he sees opportunities he's looking at west indies cricket and targeting smith up to the wicket to bowl to baker baker is driving up on the offside he's gonna get a single it runs pretty hard and oh warrell smith had to stop out of the ground but i can tell you i, I I'm, I'm i'm really looking forward to the bp yes I, i'm gonna always say that i'm looking forward to the bp because I want to see the way these guys are. Because they tell me they're fit. They tell me they're ready for this test. And I'm waiting. Because when they do it, uh, it will result in, in, in data. Uh, it's, it's never good to be carrying around that extra weight. Even though you think that you're fit having that extra weight to go around, it's not a good thing. So it's not something you would encourage? No, I would weight. not. <laughs> I would not. It's that extra strain on the joints, the ankles, the knees, the hips. So even if you're fit in terms of being athletic or, or, or physical, it could do damage because of weight. Weight carries oh yes, weight. cost. Weight carries oh yes. cost. Oh yes. So well. But in in terms of our good friend um, Baker, there, that's some, you know. Well, I give you. Like they say up north, with the cops is a donut around the way. <laughs> you have to be careful with that kind of stuff. I give you a joke about Rakim Conwell. So I was the manager of the under-15 team, and we went to Antigua to play uh, in the Liberty Islands tournament. And Rakim Cornwall was being this day. I hear everybody talk about Jimbo is going to beat you guys. And this is under-15 I'm telling you about now. Jimbo is going to beat you guys. I said, well, who this guy Jimbo is? They keep talking about his Jimbo. I'll get back to that. Here is Mark First Mead coming for a new spell to go to Dino Baker. And he's essaying a drive, not even a drive, a check shot. But he was beaten outside the off stump by Mark First Mead with a quicker, faster delivery on off stump. 99 for two. We're in over number 16. And we're playing a 40 over fair, but uh, they only need 24 runs of victory, does the MNI 1. And they look on course. Whether or not there could be another twist, we'll see. They just lost their captain, Zawande White, who it was the pick of the, the players today, really. He looked good with the ball and looked good with the bat. Here is Mead up to the wicket. The ball to Baker. Baker is uh, squared up. Squared up, trying to drive to the onside. He, he was better off playing that straight, Trevor. So this Jimbo guy at under 15, and I had a guy by the name of Ralston White. Ralston, the vice president of the cricket association. His other son. Zawandi White is his son as well. Oh, it is a family history here. Anyways, so Ralston and Akeem Mead were the two opening batsmen. Shernell Burns was the best cricketer in Montreal at under 15. And we went to Antigua. So this Jimbo story. When we went to play Antigua, we went out to Falmouth. And they said, Jimbo is going to kill you today with, with everything. All right. So here's a... Uh, Mead. Mead is driven into the onside. Warren Smith is diving. Can't stop it. He's going to take some work from Aiden Lyman, who runs around well. Picks it up now, and they've come back for two. So Dino gets two. He moves to six, and the score is 101. 100 is up. The 100 is up, and I'll give you the details of that in a bit. 101 for two. 22 runs for victory. 101 in over number 16. 16.4 overs. Here is the up to the wicket to ball to Baker. He's driving, he's swinging, he's swinging, and he's out. Leg before. He's playing the similar shot. He's tried that shot three times. The first one he, he squared up. The second one he got two through mid wicket, and he tried it again, and it was LBW to Mark First Mead. I have to give kudos to Mark First Mead. When I started coaching with Fitzroy Bowman, this was a young guy who was around the park. Even when the senior guy 
is a plane. He's there, had this deep desire for cricket. He has gotten there, made a few double centuries for Montreal, made some good scores for Montreal, and he's still in the game. Well, it's going to be, we don't know if there's going to be a twist in this game. It now, we, 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 we're going to see if the MNA one hold their nerves and finish this game because now Grant is still there, so hopefully that's, they can finish it. Uh, 22 key, runs for victory. Mark Persimmon is in over number five. He has three more after this. And whether or not they bring back Damien Williams to see if he can put a little pressure, we're going to see what happens. Uh, Leon Williams now has not bowled bad, but his last delivery went for six. So they might want to bring back a uh, 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 GoPro kill and bring back uh, Damien Williams now to apply a little pressure on the batting uh, at the other end of Grant and keep the other batsman on strike. But McPherson has one delivery to bowl to Jamal Williams. Young Williams is is playing. I think I, I'm not, I don't have any statistics, but I think this is the first time I'm seeing him bat at this level. He's played uh, before, but I don't think I've seen him bat. So let's see what he has. He's a left-handed batsman, a left arm orthodox spinner as well. He's going to face up to the experienced bowling. And Warrell Smith knows there's a rookie out in the middle. He put some pressure on. So there are two slips, uh, one a bit wide, uh, backward point, uh, extra cover, cover, mid off. Here is Mark First Mead. Bowls to Williams. Williams comes stylishly onto the front foot, competently as well, and I plays it back up the track uh, for no run. And there's some excitement outside, as you can see. Someone whistling away, trying to get someone's attention or celebrating that defensive shot. At the end of over number 16, MNI1 chasing 123 for victory, a 101 for three, Trevor. The idea of bringing Williams back could be a good ploy, but he needs that control. He needs that control. Well, they're having that discussion now. And whether or not he be brought back is left to be seen. Warrell Smith is going to continue. He has been pretty expensive. Four overs for 30 runs. He's picked up a wicket, the wicket of the captain. And whether or not he can use that guile and skill to apply a little more pressure. He's a short man. And he can't bowl too fast. I don't think he, this, this height does allow him to bowl too fast. Do you think, Trevor? Here is he bowling a delivery that's on the pad. So Grant who pushes it up on the onside, and there is no run. At that stage, there was a young man they called Hungry Warren. <laughs> they wanted to know a guy of that height how he could have gotten this kind of pace out of a wicket. Well, I didn't finish telling you a story about the Antigua match, but here is he up to the wicket to bowl to Grant who's going back and ill advised, going back there and about hustling to him a little and was too close and jammed him for space and almost got himself tangled up there. But he played it well in the end for no run. So in the end, really and truly, uh, Jimbo made 40 yard. And I'll tell you, here is he up to the wicket to bowl to Grant. Grant plays it back up the track. But he looked good. But Damon Williams, who was our premier fast bowler at the time, and another bowler, I'll tell you who it was, but Damon Williams was one of our quickest bowlers, Damon Williams. And he hustled these batsmen. Chanel Burns himself did some work. Here is he up to the wicket to bow to Grant. Grant is dabbing it to uh, third man, or not third man, but to backward point. And it's fielded by Leo Williams there with no run. So Jimbo did make some runs, but Damien Williams really roughed him up and bowled him right on target and got him caught a backward point, um, a backward square. He made 40 yards. Anyways, they made 127. And Monsat went into bat. We had Ralston White. Don't forget I said this. And we had, what's it, Akimi. Here is he running up to bowl and he's missing his run. So good that he misses his run. When we caught the Antigua bowling, we were 117 before we lost our first wicket. Ralston White was on 46 and Akim Mead made 30 odd and it was 117. A lot of extras but it doesn't matter. We won that game for one wicket. Chanel Burns went in and not, oh well here is a missed opportunity. He still could get a run out but Naim Nehemiah Young really made a, a bubble there and should have done better with that one. 4.5 overs, so he's in one more delivery left in the over. So he gets the, the run, 102. He moves to 34, does Grant. 
and it's one or two or three. So yes, yeah, so Shannon Burns went out and hit six four and finished the game. So we, we, we don't know what happened. Jimbo did get a good score, but Jimbo was not effective in anything else. So I am happy that Cornwall is on the West Indies team and just to say that he's come a long way and that's how far back that he had a name that when he came onto the scene everybody wanted to say Jimbo is gonna do this, Jimbo is gonna do that. So Jimbo being in the West Indies team is not by fluke. It's since he was under fifteen. Rakim Cornwall has been a dominant force, a figure when he comes on the scene. Here is Warren Smith up three wicket to bowl to um, Williams, who is playing away from his body. A good delivery in the end to end that over. And at the end of over, number 17 is 102 for three. Williams is on not, and Grant is on 34. I, I must say, Gregory, that I had the pleasure of watching that on the 15, on the 17, on the 19 tournament you guys had. like the viewership was off the charts and I guess this COVID did a number on us because once we had it going, live islands had it going because there are no other even on other islands you don't even get live commentary from this. Absolutely day. and that's what Monster Cricket has decided to do. We're going to stay with live islands, we're going to try to bring commentary because we know um, a, a huge number of our people are out in the diaspora. Here is uh, Mead. Mead is hit high and hard over the boundary for six. So uh, Joshua Grant has decided, hey, I am not trusting what I see coming out of the pavilion, and I'm going to try to take the charge and bring this home as quick as possible, not to tolerate any further loss of wicket. 108 for three. He moves to 40, and whether or not he will be able to pass 40 is a different story. Well, absolutely, and uh, that was a good shot, a very confident shot indeed. And that was saying, hey, I've been here for a while, I'm the dominant batsman, I'm the senior batsman out here, and I have to seed home for my team. I lost my skipper to a good catch, so I'm going to try to finish this before it gets a bit tricky, because I'm not sure what's left except, well, you have Jamal KB in the, in, the, in the pavilion as well. But after that, it's a suspect batting lineup going down. So really and truly, this pair, along with Jamal KB, should see it home, and if not, then you could have a little and for the 15. 108 108 108 for three as they're checking the scores. Mark Mead is in the course of over number six before this five overs, eight, um, 12 runs, two wickets. So that six has really changed his bowling figures somewhat, and the scoring. The asking rate now is 0 0.72. Here is Mead up to the ball and he's swinging and there's a shout. Uh, he might have run onto his stump, maybe, but he was able to get over. And really that ball, uh, he was trying to pull it and he rushed onto him somewhat, Trevor, and really got himself in a tangle. Mark first me trying to effect the big breakthrough here, pushing back the field at cover. Comes in, bowls to Grant. Grant dabs it into the onside, the offside, looking for a run. Uh, it was Jamal Williams, and that run was not there. So these guys are happy to get the exposure and get cricket and get practice and match practice as well. Oh yes, uh, we, we need that because if we're, if we're looking at getting guys to the next level, it has to start here. Here's a delivery stroke out into the onside, and there is no run. Mark first meet in the course of over number six. He's got two more after this. Whether or not he'll be able to bowl those two with the score remaining 17, is it? Or 15. Here is he being tick trying to tickle. He gets it. I don't know if he got a bat into it, but he's going to run pretty close to the final leg boundary. He's picked up now by Fenton, and he gets it back in. Let's see. White. So that's three runs. Three runs to the total. He brings it down to 12 runs remaining to get. And uh, the overs, as I said, is not an issue, Trevor. And if there is batsmen, but a few more. Into course of over number 18. This is over number 18. And I did say they should get it before they get to 25 overs. So they're on target. Here is he bowling to Grant. Grant is back. 
pushing it up on the onside. And McPherson midfield. No damage done. Grant is on 40. His captain, Zawandi White, made 40 as well. Uh, Baker, Dino Baker made 6. And uh, Rodney, the other batsman, made 9. Here is he up to the bucket to bowl and is driven into the offside, the onside, and Warren Smith fields. So they've been effectively, they've, they've effectively kept Jamal Williams on strike to Warren Smith, and they're looking to penetrate the batting of the MNI one through the other end away from Zawandi White. Bam, Joshua Grant. Joshua. They're basically, you know, leading from the front. And they're looking good at this point. If necessary, just pick the singles, dispatch the bad balls, and, you know, they'll be able to take it home. Right. So, it's going to be Warrell Smith in the course of his sixth over. Five overs for 31 runs, one wicket. He's trying to see if he can make some further inroads into the batting before they can reach this 123 target. Uh, here is he, up to the wicket to bowl to Jamal Williams now, bowls to Williams, Williams is getting a delivery, stroking it nicely, but getting it to the man at backward point, and there is no run, Jamal Williams is looking good, and these guys are really trying to step up to the plate, you know, trying to take the responsibility of batting, and individual um, accomplishments are important as well, here is he, up to the wicket to bowl to Williams, Williams is flicking down the outside, a wide delivery missing, but looking good in the shot that he's attempting, was down the onside and he tried to flick it, uh, had the balance but didn't make any contact and had he touched that, that would probably have gone to the bounce for four. So wide delivery carries the score to 112, 11 runs to get and overs are not an issue. Here is Warren Smith up to the wicket to bowl to Williams, Williams is dri driving and they're going to look for a single, they're going to get it too. He gets off the mark, driving it up to mid on and uh, the short mid wicket in, in Leon Williams couldn't pick up quickly. So he gets off the mark, he's on one. And the score now 113 for three. Ten runs for victory. And it looks almost sealed. I must say I was on your side when you thought we were bringing back Damian Williams. Here's Warren Smith. Up to the wicket to bowl to... Oh, my goodness. Well, 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 well. Don't speak. Don't. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, he's out. He's out caught by Mark Persimede at... at, at Short extra cover or short cover. He, he, I mean, I tell you, I don't know, boy. This number 40, nobody seems to be getting past that 40. Yeah? So I'm not going to say much more about that. So he made 40. And Randy White made 40, 40, I think. And it looks like 40 is a number that they should try to reach. How much uh, did Christian make on the other? 43. 43. He got past it. Yes. So 113 for four. And have the game reach a turning point. Can we say that there's still some drama left in this? I hope there is. <laughs> I hope there is. 113 for four. Warrell Smith in his sixth over has picked up his second wicket with a full toss, by the way. <laughs> and Joshua Grant <laughs> really another uh, rap gift, but this time he didn't capitalize yeah. as Zawandi did when he batted. 113 for four. Ten runs for victory. And could there be another twist in this encounter? Don't forget, I remind you that tomorrow, the uh, Munson Cricket Association T20 tournament, which is running parallel with the 50 over tournament, as with the same two teams, uh, not maybe not the same 11, but the same two teams come up against each other and they'll battle away through four rounds of 2020 and four rounds of 50 over matches for bragging rights and also for making sure that we can identify who will be uh, identified as players who will make the senior team once there's some level of competitive cricket at the Leeward Islands level, which we are going to wait some information on that soon. This Trevor? My, my ploy, you know, um, Gregory would have been bringing Williams from this end next over and have my first ball from the other end. See if we could get another Here's Warren Smith, he's trapped and the pad is running down the wicket. There could be trouble. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, the Chris, was Chris that, that, that little injury slowed him up. Well, I'm yeah. saying I don't want these guys to be panicking. 
it's 10 runs to get and uh, i don't know if, if there's some panic there, there's a there's a suspect batting lineup from, from harrison down to the end here here's a good delivery by warren smith and there is no run 5.5 overs he's bowled there's one delivery left in this over uh, it's the over number 21 is it oh no over number 19 but there's no worry with the over there's some 21 overs after this here is the after the wicket to bowl to jemwell kb's out oh he's yeah. drop drop by mcpherson mead wow 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 and the twist the twist in this game would that have been the game set match oh i don't know would that have been the game changer end of the over end of over number 19 warrell smith and and and, and as i listen to you trevor i think uh end of over number 19 113 for four and there are some goosebumps there's some it's never over bumps. until it's over. Wow, 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 wow. Never over until the fat lady, lady sings. sings. Ten runs to get. Six wickets to get. Maybe I should oh. say that. Damien Williams, that's what I was saying. I think the skipper has been listening to me to some medium or the other. Williams is coming back from business. And I think the skipper will continue from that end. He's got some trouble of his own. He's got two overs left. Mark Person has two overs left. So they, they, they have to have a plan here. And it, 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 it seems as if they're going for the juggle. Believe me, though, that last drop catch is the person who I was expecting it to at least pull that in. Safe hands. It's wow. him and Kristen is like the safe hands. Wow. I thought it would have been a good one there. Here is Williams up to get the ball to Jamal. Jamal is driving to the offside. Mark first midfield. A good stop indeed driven man this youngster uh williams looks confident it's williams to williams and remember it was williams to williams before so it's jamal williams i want to say good afternoon to lydia Jeannie, daphne hewlett my friend um on jeanette and elijah one all my colleagues and friends there here is uh williams up and he's oh. Oh! straight to fry and they're gonna get a single but that one ripped through, missed everything for a buy. And uh, one more, nine runs to get. Nine runs to get. Well, 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 Damien Williams would want to know how that didn't hit us now. Well, it's all happening. All happening when we thought we were cruising home. I wonder if Tanti Merle is on the bank up there looking on from home. It's getting exciting. It doesn't seem like we're going to have an anti-climax. It's Damien Williams, who's been given his sixth over. He's 5.2 overs, 28 runs, no wickets. But he's looking to break the back of the batting and go into the tail. Because after this, I think they're into the tail. Any one of these guys fall right now, they're, they're moving right into the tail. And if they get Jemuel, and had they held on to Jemuel, I think this game would have had a twist, even though it's 10 runs to get. Albeit... That said, Jamal KB will have to make things do. Here is he now. Damien Williams up to get the ball to KB. KB is getting a good delivery. A good delivery. That was on about off stump. He played it well into the offside. There's a buzz in the field and a little bit more energy in, in, in pepping the step of the fielding team right yes. now. Yes, there's hope. Just want to remind folks that tomorrow we'll be having a live broadcast again of the 2020 version starting at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 6 p.m. Uh, in the U UK. Here is Williams up to the ball to him. He's driving out to the offside and looking for a single. Could be trouble. Oh my goodness. Well, 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 well. The ball, the chances, the chances are coming. They are getting the chances, Trevor. They are creating the chances. There's panic, pandemonium, all sort of things happening out here. 115 it is for four the edging so much closer eight runs away but i can tell you the drama the twist the Attention. the situation have not changed wow it's it's building it's building and i'm enjoying it uh albeit i tell you trevor they would have ruled the chance of making at least 150. you can see they're now realizing that there's some vulnerability after the top three or four batting here is Williams up to the wicket to the ball to Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams is playing it with a full face of the bat, saying, I'm not going to give you my wicket. I'm going to be solid as a rock. 
I'm MNI1. I'm solid as the rock memorial. Here is Williams really coming back. He's, he, there's energy in his bowling. There's always energy in his bowling. From ever since I told you, the under 15, this guy should have been in the West Indies team along with Rocking Cornwall with based on where they started. Here is Williams up to the wicket to bowl to Williams. A slow delivery flicked into the onside. Run, jump. Have another over. Is there any drama left? Let's see. There's been drama from since the fall of Zawandi White's wicket. Grant. Now you have a situation where it's going to be Jamal Williams and Jamal KB. Then left with Harrison, Liebert, Rogers, Lane. I don't know. It should be that hard to get. They can wait it out. There's some 20 overs remaining. What can Tantimoral conjure up here now, Trevor? I'm wondering, what's next? What is next? Well, it's going to be Warren Smith to continue the, 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 the battle between him and Jamel Kaby. Remember, he had Jamel drop of the last delivery of his over, last over. Six overs, 33 runs, two wickets. Here is he up to the wicket. The ball to Jamel Kaby. Bowls to KB. KB is bold. KB is clean bold. Comprehensively beaten and bold. That ball kept low. He stayed on the back foot. And well, well, well. Tanti Merle is padding up. Trevor. It's not over. Not over until the fat lady sings. Well, well, well. Eight more runs to go. Wow, wow, wow. Warrell Smith has... Well, can there be... A captain change, or oh, captain change game, game changer. It was Zawandi White. Oh, well, it's Jamari Lane. So Jamari Lane, I believe, is going to bring it home. Trevor, my bet is that Jamal, J uh, Jamari Lane is going to bring it home for m and I won. I don't, I don't believe he's going to succumb like how the other batsmen succumb, but Warrell Smith will have other ideas, Trevor. Thank you. It's not all left to be seen, Gregory. I love the excitement. Remember, I told you that MNI won, played a very young, inexperienced team. They did well with the ball, and now we are right into the suspect section of their batting. Jamal Williams, he's on one. He's looked solid in defense, but he has not scored. He's played some good strokes, but he has not scored as, as he would have liked. The eight runs remaining, five wickets to get. And we're into where Warren Smith might think he has it. Here is he. Up to get the ball to Jamari Lane. Jamari Lane gets a ball outside the off stump. A good delivery. Flutter. Uh, um, going through a bit low, really. Didn't take, get much height. The more that balls, Gregory, the more confidence it brings to the bowlers. The fielding team, they are buzzing. They're buzzing. They're on their pit. They're, uh, they're on their two toes. Here is he. Up to the get the ball to Jamari. Jamari is beaten outside the off stump. Warren Smith has energy. What is the another? The, where is the twist? Where is the twist? Eight runs to get. Can you believe this? 123 is the target. Warren Smith, 6.3 over, three wickets, 33 runs. Jamari Lane, he has the whole reserves. Here is Will, um, Smith, away from the fire, balls to. And he's edging it. He's going to go. Oh, there could be a run out. Stop. He stopped it, but he didn't know. He stopped it. And had he been aware of where the ball was, Jamari Lane is off the mark. That's what the result is. Seven runs to get. So Jamari Lane picks up his first run, and he's edged it, edged it, actually, edged it closer to his victory. Edged it. Ah, I like, I like metaphoric language. <laughs> edged it. And he, he connects. All right. Right. If that's metaphoric, my English teacher. Colorful said. language. Colorful, really. It, it just synchronized. Uh, Warren Smith has one delivery, two deliveries left. And Jam uh, no, Jamal Williams is on strike. Comes in now, does Warren Smith to bowl to Williams. Williams is choking it nicely in defense. And I like this youngster. He has the defense. He has the composure. He has the, the calming spirit where he's decided, look, I'm not going to get flustered with all what's going on around me. I'm going to play each ball on his merit. Warren Smith comes up to bowl to Jamal Williams, bowls to Williams. Williams is flicking it and he's a wide. So Warren Smith has given one more. Six runs to get. Five wickets to get. And the pressure has eased somewhat with a wide. He has to bowl the last delivery of his seventh over. Over. So 
170 for five. Here is he up to the wicket to bowl to Jamal Williams. And this is dropped on the pad. Not outside on fire lane. Ah, Warren Smith was looking for it, but he was angling down the leg side and not out. Uh, oh, end of over number 21. Not worrying about the amount of overs. 19 overs, surely they can make six runs. So the runs, the overs not an issue. Not so we're not going to have an issue. 117 for five. Sometimes you have to conform to some of the rowdy people, and we have rowdy people. So, I want to apologize to our listeners if you're hearing some loudness. It's all excitement, it's all in the spirit of the game. Here is Damien Williams with other ideas. Comes up to ball to Jamari Lane. Balls to Lane. Lane is staring it down, edging it down to third man, wide of the man there at first slip, and one more. So, Damien Williams working up ahead of steam. He's looking to to finish the, the five wickets, so get the five wickets, but there's only five runs left. I tell you, Jamari Lane, a big heart. So a young guy, big heart, out there facing up to a fast bowler that have a lot of experience. Uh, you, yes. What do you think 150 runs would have come? Well, I did say that. Had they gotten up to 150 and realized the importance of runs on the board, now you're seeing the pressure of runs on the board. Five runs to get. Here's Damon Williams up to Jamal, Jamal Williams. Balls to Williams. Williams is stylishly and playing it off the middle of the bat. Damon Williams, he's saying, you're not going to get through my defense today. And that Damon Williams has to turn and go back to his bowling mark. 118 for five. Can there be another twist, Trevor? Five runs to get. Williams, solid, confident, As a rock. straight back. M and I won, chasing 123 for victory, 118 for five. Damien Williams are running away from us here at the commentary box and up to the wicket to bowl to Jamal Williams. Williams is beaten all ends up by a beauty of a delivery. Just on about off stump and missing by a, a hair. Wow, what a delivery. Yes. But he's still there, Trevor. Still there. Still there. Still there. He was good enough not to get that edge on it. <laughs> five runs left to go, Gregory. Wow. Five runs get. Five runs to, five get. Runs to get. We are not worried about overs, as I said before. There are 19, there are 18 overs and a bit left. And we, we picked up a bit of spectatorship uh, on the banks and not too much crowding and nothing really to worry about in terms of spacing and social distancing. Here is the up to the wicket to ball to Williams. Williams gets a bat down on it. Had to hurry down on it. Pass. Quick on the stumps. And Williams is to the measure of it again. These two youngsters, who are two of the, the newest members to the senior setup, are really showing big heart, guts, and stamina to be out there facing up to uh, the, the veteran Munchard fast bowler, the, the leading fast bowler, along with Quinton Boatswain in the Munchard national team. And these guys are saying, we're going to gut it out, and we're going to get the team home. Here is Damien Williams with other ideas. Up to the wicket to bowl to Jamal Williams. Ball to Williams. Williams is playing it up on the onside. And again, he's kept him out. So, Trevor, I am telling you, this is some fantastic stuff here. Damien Williams bowling his heart out for MNI2. But the, 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 the resilience of Jamal Williams and, and, and uh, Jamari Lane has really been come to the fore here because they would Damien for sure would think that he could break the defense. He's bowled 6.5 overs before, um, up to now. 30 runs at no wicket. Here is Damien Williams. Away from us at the commentary box. And up to the wicket to bowl to Jamal Williams. Bowl to Williams. Williams stroking it beautifully out on the offside. Not for a run, but really to say, get out of here. You're not going to get through. Here goes some, some, um, some tactics. You call this tactics. They're sending out the water card in the middle of everything to say, hey, guys, five more runs. Look, you see what's going on? It's all happening out here, and I like it. It's good cricket. It's lovely cricket. It's cricket at any level of cricket, and you see this like type of competitiveness. You really have to applaud it. I'm, I'm impressed for you to be telling me that this player at the wicket is the most junior set of guys Absolutely. in the setup. I'm impressed. Absolutely. I don't solid, think solid defense, good composure, straight bat, not anything loose. Oh, the water card. So they've decided to take the water break. But here's what I'll tell you. I don't think neither of those guys are 15 years of age. 
not, not one of those two guys. And the fundamental point here, I think Jamar is about, only about 13, 14, and, and also Jamar. And what I'm saying to you, the, the type of maturity they're showing at the priest, really and truly, I, I, I think it's a um, compliment. Um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Give me the word I'm looking for. Where you, where you, you, you can applaud it. You know, I, I want to say that. Anyway, commendable. That's the word. Jeff? Jeff is the father of the man. So you know he's going to put in that coaching work. Yes, and he's on so also in the team that he's coaching as well. Coaching. I mean, I'm impressed. So far, I haven't seen the composure from Jamari as I've seen from Williams. Williams. Um, well, Williams is rock solid. Rock solid. He doesn't look flustered at all by the situation. No. Maybe he's unaware. Maybe he's he, he, the father. He, he's not aware of how tense the situation is in terms that, of... A, that, that left hand, it brings to mind Owen Road. Um, Owen O'Brien. Lawrence O'Brien. Right, right, right. I'm um, even Zoan Sweeney. I'm, I'm, I must say I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Yeah. Uh, yes, so 118 for 5. 118 for 5. And we're at the water break. Some 22 overs completed. 22? 22 overs completed, score? 24 overs completed? Right, so 24 overs completed. As I said, I'm not worried about the score, oh. the, the overs. With 16 overs remaining and five runs to get, it is all up to the two batsmen out there in the middle to just hold their nerves, just play each ball on its merit and look for the loose ball where you're going to be able to get, even if they get one boundary, that levels the score. And but surely... You, you, you look at Williams, he's not crazy about getting runs or playing rash shots. You could see he has an idea that there's not a lot of runs left to make. Right. There's a lot of overs to Spending time in the, Spend at the crease. I'm impressed. Very much so. So Warren Smith have some thinking to do. He's going to probably bowl his last over. Then you have Damien with one more over. If those two guys can get through those two overs that are left from both uh, Smith and Williams, then surely I, I don't think there should be. Mark Percy himself has two overs left. So, so that's four of the 16. There's still 12 overs after that. So they, they don't need to worry about those four overs. They just got to see them out. Let's not <laughs> lose track. Remember, the batting from the team prior, they lost like five wickets for seven runs. Remember that? Right, but there's five runs left. Are you saying they're going to lose five wickets for five runs? Anything is possible. But yeah. these two guys, I am, I've already bet that Jamari Lane, who's on strike, is going to bring it home. Okay. I've already bet that. So I'm already confident that Jamari Lane, who's a young, promising, and he's a good bowler as well, actually. But he is young. He is, he is in the start, very early, infancy stage of his career. Now we're back, and we're into over number 25. And skipper Warren Smith is into his final over. He's picked up three for 35 off seven before this. Can Warren Smith be the game changer like his uh, other compatriot on the other side? Zawandi White has been for his m and I won. Let's see. Jamari Lane taps his bat. Waits for Warren Smith. Comes up now. Pass up by Lane. Bowls to Jamari who's splashing again. Outside the off stump. Missing. Through to keeper Fry. Well, well, well. And it's not uh, 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 as a result of not getting chances. They have had their chances. They've taken some and they've put down some. But they're still in the game. Five runs to get. Warren Smith up to the wicket. The ball to Jamari Lane. Jamari is driving out on the offside. Really good bowling, good targeted bowling here by Warren Smith. And he's come back pretty well. His first three overs went for 27 runs. His last four overs has gone for, for, for nine or seven, is it? Nine. Nine. Here is he. Up to the wicket to bowl to Jamari Lane. Full pitch and driven to the offside. They're not going to get through the offside. Leon Williams at backward point or squarish cover fields and there is no run. 118 for 5, MNI 1. They're chasing a target of 123. Warren Smith comes up, bowls to Lane. Lane is on the back foot, and that one almost got through, but as solid as a rock, he got down and kept it out. Good delivery, though. Good testing bowling here from Warren Smith, and Jamari Lane has been to the measure, and I'm really happy that two youngsters under the age of 15 are holding the nerves. 
Here is uh, Smith up through the ball to Lane. Lane is on the back foot and slapping that one, but missing. Slapping at it and at missing. It. Yes. See, the shot intent was right, but he was not going to get any touch on that. Not even an edge. I think Warren Smith would have wished for an edge. He's into his last delivery of this spell. Can he make one more breakthrough? Here is he up through the ball to Lane. Lane is on the front foot and keeps it out. Solid as a rock. I made no over nevertheless. 25 done. 15 to go. Five runs to get. Five wickets to get. Oh, my goodness. It's all happening here at Salem Park. The first match in four-match series is really being competitive. Not that the runs that were scored by m 2 uh, was anything to worry about. But now the pressure of wickets left and the, the type of wickets that are there to come is on m 1. I have to reset my schedule, Gregory. Because I'm, I'm impressed with what I'm seeing here. And I look forward to seeing a few more matches. Whatever is left that I could fit into Your the time that I have left. But I'm, I'm impressed. I look forward to seeing the rest of the games. <laughs> yeah. well, well, Trevor, you, you're not as excited as I am. Because really, this first game has got my temperature up. Here is Damien Williams with his last over. Bowls a full pitch delivery. It's choked down by Jamal Williams. And I know if Lydia is anywhere close by she would be out there watching i'm looking in the stands for see if i see uh mommy lydia or even genie because jamal williams has come up chumps whether or not he stays there to the end he's really been resolute in his defense and keeping damien williams the most veteran of our bowlers at the national level out here is he, Damien Williams, up to the wicket, the ball to Jamal Williams. Williams is across and driving, driving well. He's looking for a single, they're looking for it, they're getting it too. So Jamal Williams stroked that one beautifully to the right, to the left of Warren Smith, to the right of um, Livan at mid-off, mid and picks up a single and brings his team even closer. Four runs away, and Damien Williams will be left to ponder how on earth that two young Rookie cricketers were able to keep the best of Montserrat out. And surely it will be, um, the pundits will have their say. Here is Williams up to the wicket to ball to Jamari Lane. Jamari Lane staring too wide and it's going to run pretty close to the boundary. Can it go? It will go close. No, they're back for the second. And uh, oh, well, close enough, but edged. But stayed away. I'm saying educated edge on that occasion. He picks up two. He moves to four. Jamari Lane, I said to you, Trevor, when he walked out, will bring it home. And Damien Williams has fought hard. Uh, there's a song by Short. Um, there's a song. You fought hard for some years. We fought abstinent. King Abstinent comes to mind with these two youngsters out here. We fought hard. And Basil Chambers always plays that song. But definitely, this game has brought all the excitement that we expect for a competitive set of matches between MNI 1 and MNI 2. Here is Damien Williams up to the wicket to pull to Jamari Lane. Jamari Lane is again staring at his out caught behind. He is out caught behind. Let's see. What? Well, 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 well. What could it be? Well, they've heard I'm something, but I, I, I said this to you. I, it was an afterthought uh, uh, appeal by Damien Williams. Uh, the keeper was confident. The slip area was confident. They need to just play the game because the umpire said not out. Uh, and it appears as if that they, they, it, it was felt that there was an edge. But the delayed appeal no, by Damien Williams. Really remember, the keeper is closer than Damien. Right. And I'm saying there was a confident call by the keeper. This was playing away from the body. What could it possibly have touched anything? Well, the, the, the umpire didn't hear anything. Okay. And, I, it, and I, I said this to you. The feeling team is coached by umpire um, Sylvester Ben Greenaway. So clearly, you can't say there's anything. The umpire did not hear anything. He's not out. Damien Williams up through. Ball to Jamar Lane. Balls to Lane. Lane is getting a shot. He's slapping at it outside the off stump. A loud shout behind again. But again, this youngster has, is saying, I'm not afraid. You're, you're trying to slap the premier fast ball of Manchester. Two backward point for four. Come on. I tell you, it's all happening. 7.5 overs. Damien Williams in his distress, in his dismay at the fact that he here is he turning shot and he's trying to kidnap the, the youngster in terms of catching him off guard is driven straight back up the wicket and there is no run the end of the spell for Damien Williams he's finished wicketless eight overs 33 runs no wicket and I can tell you hooray and kudos to those two youngsters at the wicket 
for really standing up as men to yeah, Damien Williams. Yeah. I've never reached far in Montreal cricket. But Lady Ryan has been a lover of cricket. And I'm glad that he has her bloodline here in cricket. Lady used to take me to Cheryl's Park on Sundays with Richard Samuel to play against St. John's. And she provided everything I needed for cricket. That's how much she loved it. I'm impressed by it. Absolutely. 121. They are two runs away from victory. 121 for five. And I think the, the, it's the last hurrah in, 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 in the roll of the dice in regards to, to MNI2 to try and, and, and pull, snatch victory from the jaws of defeat, if that's the right way to put it. Here is uh, Aiden Lyman comes in bowls and his wide delivery signals so the scores are leveled. Aiden Lyman came in and is one for the over. So wide signal by Empire Jeff Lane. The scores are leveled and clearly now it's all the writing is on the wall for MNI2. Yes. They would rule their batting performance and that spell of bowling from uh, both uh, Dino Baker and Zawandi White which ripped through the heart of their batting and some eight wickets falling between those two and really and truly that was the difference in this game. Aiden Liven comes in bowls to Jamal Williams and again Liven is struggling with his run but it's his first match. He has the ability, he knows what he's doing and clearly he's just struggling. Jeff Lane is saying a few words to him. Ben would have a conversation with his team after this, uh, hopefully um, planning for tomorrow. Anyways, a very good game in the end, Trevor. Oh, yes. uh, Anticlimax as well, but nevertheless, really brought some, some entertainment. Here is live and up to the wicket. The ball and he's pulling down the onside wide, and that's the end of the game. The game is over. So that is the end of the game. Yeah, let's see. Je he doesn't, I don't think he does. Yeah, so that's the end of the game. Right, so 123. Uh, Anticlimax in the end. Live and bowling two wides to finish. And uh, Jamal Williams and Jamari Lane, they are champions. And I think Dwayne Bravo Sang would be relevant champion to these two youngsters in their very new life of cricket in terms of new experience for them, uh, a, a very big step in terms of their senior setup and being a part of the senior setup. Really, really hats off to these two guys facing the, 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 the heart of the Montserrat bowling attack in terms of Damien Williams. Bowling is hard, bowling with pace, bowling accurate, but these two youngsters were determined, showed guts, showed grit, and stayed there and saw their team both. Jamal Williams, who remain not out on two, and Jamari Lane not out on four. Uh, MNI won, winning the first of four encounters, 123 chase uh, for five, and really, Trevor, a good game in the end. Yes. Excitement was there. I think, not I think, I know the coaches are going to make the adjustments for the next game, whether the next 50 50 or the 20 20. Because when you look at that first batting team after Kristen, um, Sullivan, and I think that third batsman, you had like six guys between they only had like nine runs. That's a huge drop off. Exactly, and, and clearly is much rusty, uh, you could call it whatever you like, but I think uh, young Zawande White showed his experience, showed skill, and really guile as well, because he was able to, to use pace, the quicker delivery played a big part on both ends, in terms of Damien Williams, um, uh, Dino Baker, and uh, Zawande White, and they, 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 they reap the rewards, eight wickets between the two, and 16 overs as well. So clearly, uh, just for 50, 51 runs. And I, I like the fact that the two of them bowling tandem and they were the difference makers in this game. Zawande White and Joshua Grant got 40s. Uh, Christian Yearwood got a lot of chances. He made 43. He would look to cut out, eliminate the chances and look to make a, a, a huge difference 
in this batting coming tomorrow in the 2020 and going forward in, in the rest of the tournament? And I think for, for him, I was actually looking forward to him adding on to that bowling. It's just a lapse in concentration because you have the spinners who are pushing the faster, flatter bowling and you're playing on the back foot. You're setting up yourself for that LBW trap or like he did, flatter ball being bowled. But all in all, it was a nice game forward to the rest games that may be, you know, planned and the adjustments by each coach and players themselves. And we'll have something great. But Trevor, that's the thing about playing cricket and playing for, um, competitive sport. You make the adjustment as you go along and you have to have that amount of time. A number of these players are looking to go off to the UK as well and this is like a good warm-up to that. When they go up there, they should be in some sort of form. They should be physically fit and then cricket ready and, 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 and competitive cricket ready as well so they will be an asset when they go off to any team that they're playing with and and, and build their, 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 their marketability so this is what we are hoping it's all about a wholesome approach towards developing um, our cricket locally regional cricket and the ability for these guys to get a career in the in the, in the path of cricket so definitely all all cylinders going this is the first game want to thank live islands um, for helping us to get it out there to the world and to get it into the homes of the the folks who can't come to the park because of the, the COVID-19 pandemic and social distancing um, guidelines and restrictions so really and truly all hands on deck is what is happening here to really produce a cricket tournament and competitive cricket where our youngsters our, 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 our experienced cricketers umpires scorers everybody gets tested gets the ability to to express their ability to 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 perform in the different areas that they they have chosen maybe maybe it sounds like i'm repeating myself but um, what we're getting here from live islands is an avenue that i know a lot of friends of mine in boston who has had the opportunity to see these things they were impressed from three years ago when you had that under 15 under 17 under 19 Right, so we're going to run through the, the summary and uh, quickly for the folks uh, who are of statistical mind. And we had MNI one winning the toss, MNI two winning the toss and deciding to bat. This game was reduced to a 40 over affair. Umpire Jeff Lane and Sylvester Ben Greener were the officials out there in the middle. And uh, MNI two when they batted first. Christian Yearwood was bowled by Dino Baker. 43 runs he made. He made it in 58, uh, uh, 89 minutes of 58 balls. Five fours and one six. Uh, Kajwan Sullivan, he was caught. Jamari Lane, bowl Travis Harrison for 11. 15 balls, 18 minutes, one four. Uh, McPherson Mead, who batted well with Christian Yearwood, uh, you thought that that partnership was going to take them home uh, or take them to a bigger score, Trevor? I thought that. But that catch was. <laughs> out of this world. <laughs> it was like a Superman catch. He, he leapt yeah. to his left, actually, to his weaker side and took a catch that got rid of Mac first meet for 26. And that break the backbone of the team, like I was saying, from then on. Right. So Mac first meet, he made 26 of 29 balls in 45 minutes with four fours. And Zawandi White was the dominant factor and that's when he started his work he got rid of Mac first me to a catch a superb catch of t by Tevik Benjamin then he got Warren Smith bowled for seven uh, he made it in eight balls ten minutes no fours uh, Theodore Fry he was then LBW to Zawandi White for one he faced two balls in seven minutes Aiden Liven was caught on ball Zawandi White with a full pitch delivery and he played it back straight to Zawandi White who took a, a gleeful catch. He faced three balls in three minutes. Naeem Young, Naeem Maya Young was LBW to Zawandi White and Zawandi White just went on. He went on and on. He was like, he was going to take all the remaining wickets. But he got uh, Naeem Maya Young, uh, LBW for not uh, in seven deliveries he faced 10 minutes. Trevor and Paula didn't come out, looked pretty well in defense, but then Dino Baker deceived him with a quicker, faster delivery. He was then LBW to Dino Baker for not. He faced 10 deliveries uh, in 12 minutes. Uh, Rashawn Fenton, is it Rashawn Fenton? Yes. 
he was LBW to Dino Baker for not. He faced 13 deliveries as well and was resolute in his defense, but sometimes was deceived by a quicker delivery again. He, le he faced 13 balls, 10 minutes. And Damon Williams, who I thought should have come out a bit earlier based on the batting lineup that was there, he could have batted 7, 8, or 9. He came out at number 10. He had a, 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 a good blow where he hit one ball uh, for 6, and he made... Uh, seven in with eight balls and 18 uh, uh, minutes and really and truly you thought that he, he should have come out a bit earlier. Leon Williams they put on 18 runs and he was not out on nine with two two fours and he faced um, 11 deliveries uh, uh, in, with in 12 minutes. Right, running through the bowling lineup and you had J Jemmer KB five overs, one maiden, 14 runs, no wicket. Travis Harrison three overs, no maiden, 27 runs, one wicket. Uh, Stevel Rodney, 2.1 overs, 17 runs, 1 wicket. Dino Baker, 8 overs, 3 maidens, 25 runs, 3 wickets. Zawandi White, the pick of the bowlers, 8 overs, 3 maidens, 26 runs, 5 wickets. And Jamal Williams, just a 1 over for 8 runs. Very good bowling by Dino Baker and uh, Zawandi White. That, that, that spinning tandem really did a number on, on that first batting team. Because like I said, the middle order, you had six wickets for eight runs, you know, which was a huge slide for that batting team. Right, so then it was the m &I one's turn at bat, and they started out with Stevel Rodney and uh, Joshua Grant. Joshua Grant uh, made 40, but Stevel Rodney was the first to go. He was bowled by Mark First Meade for nine. He faced 18 balls in 23 minutes with one six. Uh, Mark, uh, Joshua Grant, he was... Caught McPherson meet Ball Warrior Smith for 40. He, he faced 59 balls in 87 minutes, two fours and two sixes. Zawande White uh, uh, was caught by a brilliant catch again by Trevor Pollard for 40. 35 balls face, 42 minutes, five fours and two sixes. Just talk about that partnership between Joshua and uh, Zawande. That, that, that's good batting. They took it out of the park. And they, 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 they stayed there, kept the, the run rate reasonable, so there wasn't any pressure for the guys coming behind. And they batted pretty well. They took it pretty much in, in, in touching distance, but with about 15 runs to go, we saw a panic button pressed, and some a lot of things were going through uh, the, 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 the heads of, of us here, and maybe the folks on the field, the batting team, because then there's some vulnerability showed shown in the batting lineup of MNI1. But Jamal Williams came to the, the, the crease and partnered with Dina Baker. But Dina Baker then left LBW2, McPherson Mead for six, and it looked as if something was going to be given here. And he only he, he made six of 11 balls, uh, 10 minutes uh, with no fours. Jamal Williams, and I must speak about this youngster, uh, was there. He was partnered by Jamal KB, but Jamal KB did not look uh, confident. He did not look uh, set to stay there for any long time. And he was then bowled by Warrell Smith for one. He faced six deliveries in eight minutes. And then came Jamari Lane. And Jamari Lane and Jamal Williams. And I'm just going to tell you, between both Jamal and Jamari, they faced 33 deliveries. That's 5.3 overs. And it was a tense but confident batting period for these two rookie youngsters who saw their team home, albeit with about 10 runs left. And really and truly, you have to take your hat off to these two youngsters. I'll just run through the bowling figures and give you a chance just to speak about the, the sol solid defense and, and composure shown by Jamal Williams and Jamal Lane. Damon Williams, eight overs, no maidens, 33 runs, no wicket. Mark First made six overs, two maidens, 21 runs, two wickets. Aiden Live and one point... Well, he didn't even bowl the point because he didn't last over, the, the second over were wide, so they're not even counted. One over, 18 runs. And uh, Warren Smith, eight overs, one made, 35 runs, three wickets. The pick of the bowlers who created that uh, nervous period for, for, for us and, and, and the team out there batting. Leon Williams, three overs. I pretty well, except for the last delivery that he bowled, 15 runs, no wicket. So really and truly, that partnership, whether or not it was a big, um, a huge amount of runs, I think it was 10 runs between Jamari Lane and uh, Jamal Williams. Saw the MNI one home, but really a good, solid composure shown 
by those two batsmen. They showed grit and patience. I'm impressed by Williams. Straight bat, nothing loose. He's a good player. Slash at anything. That's loose. And I only hope that there was about 150 to see how they would have been going through from there on. Right. Well, I just want to tell you the the. MNI 2 made 122 of 10 overs, of 27 overs, 0.1 overs, 123 um, of two hours, in two hours, really, I'm just giving you the summary here. Uh, MNI 1 chased it down in 100, uh, 123 of, for 5 of 26 overs in 1 over and 52 minutes. So just both teams have bat just batted just about two hours for the, for, the, for, the, for the result here. The final tally is that MNI 1 has taken first bracket right. In, the, in this the Monster Cricket Association 50 over version and looking forward tomorrow Trevor to the 2020 which is a faster paced game and really should be more competitive based on the fact that it's, 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 it's uh, they call it kicks to cricket but it's a more fun cricket fun part, yeah. yeah so Trevor in, in, in all your, your I'm final impressed. analysis I'm impressed I must give thumbs up to the Cricket Association Absolutely, and I say to one and all, join us tomorrow. Uh, we This is the final uh, summary, and just to re recap, that MNI won in the first match of a four-match series in the 50-over Monster Cricket Association tournament has taken first bragging rights. They have scored They have scored points, two points, one point. Is it two points or one point? Three points. They've scored three points, and MNI won. Two, uh, zero. So three points goes to MNI one, and there are three more matches to be played in the 50 over format. And we want to say thank you to Live Island Events, thank you to the Ministry of Health, thank you to the Ministry of Youth Affairs, all the, the, the executive of the Monster Cricket Association. Also thanks to the Leeward Islands Cricket Board for their partnership in terms of some of the things that we would have requested, the playing conditions we got from them, and some other um, logistical arrangements that they're assisting us with. Really, truly thankful to the cricket executive of the LICB and also to the Monster Cricket Association. All of the uh, individuals, the scorers, the ground staff, the match officials, I'm right on over Basil Morgan for being the match referee and the, the officials. Really, thank you for everyone. Live Islands, big up yourself. And just to say that we look forward to joining us here tomorrow. All things well for the 2020, the first in a series of 2020 matches between MNI1 and MNI2. With that said, that's it, and that's a wrap from Salem Park.